This is Monday, June 3rd. <laughs> it is 6.30 p.m. It is now uh, the public hearing for the Water Pollution Control Authority. Um, bum, 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 bum. June 3rd, 2019. Public hearing ground rolls. A public hearing has been scheduled to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed sewer service fees for fiscal year 2019-2020. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bosco? Here. 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 The following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current, Friday, May 24th, 2019, Town of Enfield Legal Notice. The Enfield Water Pollution Control Authority will, hear, will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall, Council Chambers 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, June 3rd, 2019, at 6.30 p.m., to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding proposed sewer fee, proposed sewer service fees for fiscal year 2019-2020. Information can be found in the office of the town clerk at www.enfield-connecticut.gov by Susan Olnicki, town clerk, dated May 21st, 2019. Item number three, the ground rules for the public hearing. There is no town, town time limit, but I ask that each person not take up too much time so everyone has the opportunity to speak. After each person who desires has had one chance to speak, we shall permit individuals to desire a second chance. After those individuals who desire a second chance, we shall permit those individuals who desire a third, fourth, etc. And please refrain from personalities. Quit, we are going to open up with a quick presentation, then we'll allow the public to come up and speak specifically on this public hearing. Turn over to Kasha. She's doing the clicking since we don't have a remote clicker. Um, we felt it important for uh, members of the public that are here and at home just to revisit very, very briefly why we're here today um, and why we have this independent rate structure. And I'll just tell you it was because we had several significant violations under the uh, DEP uh, that were threatening really fines of up to $50,000 a day if we didn't remediate. So that's when the town went into the design mode and went to referendum to have the new plant built. Uh, it is under construction. We'll be at the one-year mark in October, and it should be completed in October of 2020. As part of the requirements of the DEEP grants and the funding, uh, they require in the federal government that we have a separate taxing authority. We could no longer just do it in the regular tax bill because we were paying for this previously, but people didn't see it. It wasn't broken down separate as your motor vehicle is or your fire district and your real estate taxes. It was within the town taxes, and the federal government said you can't do that any longer. So the town adopted a rate program. They had Woodard and Curran do a presentation, and it was comprised of two parts. One is a base charge monthly, and the other is a volumetric charge. So we'll just go into uh, what we funded this year in the budget. Uh, as you can see, the operating cost uh, last year was four million three hundred thousand, give or take. Uh, proposed actually was a slight reduction of uh, just over a half a percent to four point three million. The capital for this year uh, is one. 0.1 million, which is a drop. You can see last year's budget had 1.8 million, and the reason for that is there's really $500,000 additional that's going to be for road construction when we do new sewer lines, but that could be deferred uh, until the, to the next budget. This is the total cost of the upgrade. Um, the total co cost of the plan, as you can see, is $36 million. Clean Water Fund gave us a very favorable loan uh, at 2%, but it's $23 million. Uh, 169,235. We got an outright grant from the Clean Water Fund, the federal money, uh, for doing the upgrade, 5.6 million and change. Uh, we just received the bond commission authorized, and John Wilcox sent uh, the invoice to verify under our agreement with the state for the upgrade. Their contribution is 2.5 million. We'll be receiving that shortly. And then we had a bond, the balance, which is 4.6 million and change. Now people say, well, wh why do we have to pay this? Well. We have to repay, just like we do the high school, JFK, the roads projects. There's a cost to borrow money. Uh, the 20-year loan uh, from the Clean Water Fund, which will begin for repayment over 20 years, will be in the FY21 budget. And as you can see, with the principal and interest, the payment schedule is listed there. It's approximately $1.6 million a year. <clears throat> the next loan 
uh, is the bonding, which I uh, indicated we borrowed forty six or four million six hundred and seventy two thousand and two oh six. That will be uh, again to have to be repaid in FY twenty one as well. You can see, and it's twenty years, but the charts didn't really fit, so we gave the first ten years of the payment plans on both. Um, but you can see the beginning principal interest the first year will be three hundred and twenty seven thousand uh, dollars approximately, and that will commence in twenty one. Um, so. In the past, because we had commingled funds, the, and the government said we had to stop, we owe three, we owed 3.5 million uh, from the general fund. We've been paying it back, uh, and we still have 850 thousand dollars to go, and that's going to be budgeted on a yearly basis. Um, the proposed rate will generate 6.9 million per year. Uh, and the future need by 2023 with those repayments in place, and we'll show you the schedule, we've had it in the past of Wooden and Kern, we'll need $8 million a year in 2023 to meet all of our obligations. This does not include um, the uh, $500,000 from the NOVAC report for additional per, uh, personnel. We're in the process of hiring a new superintendent at the Water Pollution Control. He'll review the NOVAC recommendations and see exactly what personnel we think we need to run the plant and maintain it, because it's going to be brand new, and we want to make sure that we don't um, have disrepair and costs associated with not properly maintaining it. As you can see, we, I think we finally got this in a more uh, understandable form. It's broken down in 2019. This is the Woodward and Kern. They were our consultant. The base rate they had recommended was $30 a quarter, and then the volumetric was $3.49 for lower uh, gallonage, and then over a higher rate, it would jump to $5.24. Last year, you adopted $21 a quarter, so it was $9 less than their recommendation, and on the volumetric, you were much closer. It was $3.43 and $5.13. In the 2020, uh, the recommendation by Wooden and Kern was to go to 36 per quarter for the base rate, and the volumetric was 360 and 539, respectively. What the recommendation is here is to not go that high, although that was their recommendation to be online to start those heavy, heavy repayments, especially by 2023, but you went with the 2019 initial recommendation, so you went with $30 per quarter for the base rate, 349 and 524 for the volumetric. To the average household, this results in an increase of $41 a year or $10.28 a quarter. If you look, you can see our current rate where we are. Uh, we're one, I mean, just below the top or the lowest rates of the three others, Manchester, New Britain, and Summers, it, as you descend, the rates are higher. With our proposed M-field rate, the increase for 2020, it puts us in about the top quarter. Um, going forward, we cannot change the funding needs. Um, stay with the current system. You can continue to file the recommendation of Wooded and Curran, add to the base rate over time, and add to the usage, the volumetric, or as we've discussed in the past, and it wasn't the preferred method, was a flat rate. We can see that's approximately $360 a year, but that is no consideration for usage. And there were real equi equitable uh, concerns that somebody, you know, a, a widower in a home would pay the same as a family of six, and the council didn't choose to go that route. It can be revisited in the future. And that's the presentation. We'd rather hear from the residents now, but we wanted to put that out there, and we'll put it up on our website tomorrow with the comments from our residents so everybody can be informed. Thank you, Chris. So on this specific this public hearing, would everyone like, anyone like to speak for the council? Well, I'd like to because people oh, that own Hold on, ma'am. Sorry. Come on up. You, you, you have to come up to the, in your name and address, please. Up. Well, my name is Joanne Dion. So, I, go ahead, ma'am. You can sit down and use your name and address, please, for the record. 23 Walnut Street. Okay. Anfield. I own a duplex on that property for 15 years. When it first started in 2014, I'm against paying for people that use facilities. I don't. Nobody buys my toilet paper. I shouldn't be paying for them to flush the toilet. So, this is where I get my problem. This is a big problem because if you rent for three people, six people move in, they're already on the state, and now we got to pay for more that they're using. So it's wrong. It's just wrong. It's just like I feel that it's socialism in the town of Enfield. 
That's what I feel. So as a property owner, I, a lot of us feel that way. And, and we're not even, look, the hall's not even full because we're not even aware about these meetings. And that's another thing I don't like about this town. You're getting a lot of people to move out. If you drive down up and down the street, there's at least two houses that are for sale. People are leaving Enfield. Too much taxes. Nobody pays for my sewer, my sewer pipes. If they break, I have to pay them. I don't ask people to help me pay for it. And then the water that we buy and use for us, we fix for those pipes too. Nobody pays for it. So you gotta come up with a system if we're gonna be imposed on the tax then it should be fair for everybody, not just on the property owners, because we shouldn't pay for people to usage. This is wrong. That's my opinion. Thank you. No one else like to speak for the council? Is she charging her tenant? You would think. Welcome. Good evening, Karen LaPlante. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, I've been kind of watching the WPCA and waiting for me meetings and waiting for meetings. And um, I think in the minutes from the January meeting, um, it was said that um, the January 22nd meeting, uh, under miscellaneous, Mr. Bromson stated they are going to address the budget of water pollution control now that it has been separated out and they have separate charges. He noted during the budget session there will be a separate budget report for the water pollution control with actual budget deliberations and adopt that before they do the town budget so that things are transparent and they can really look at all the numbers, at the numbers. Um, and I was waiting for that. I didn't go to the annual budget meeting I missed that but apparently that's when the water pollution control was was uh, shown besides now um, so I was a little disappointed none none of your meetings have discussed any budget items brought up any subject matters other than something happening right then and there somebody needing a waiver or a fee waived or adjustment um, there's no questions on what's the collection rate I know there was a huge number of receivables as of the last report we had heard. I haven't seen any update on that. I think it was over $3 million or something. I didn't stop home to get that paper that had the number on it. Um, but I had heard once the collections actually started, somebody actually started making collections that the collection rate improved. So you should have gotten more money than you expected in this fiscal year. I don't know if that's the case, and I don't know if you people know if that's the case, because it hasn't been talked about in public at all. Um, you may have had public works meetings, you know, subcommittee meetings or whatever, but I haven't seen it anywhere in a public forum in any of the meetings. Um, so what I'm questioning on the budget numbers is it says the revenues, the projected revenues, not only for the charges of services, but for everything else, is $7.2 million. That's on page 74 of the annual budget. Um, yet the expenses, or the number that was just mentioned, was $5,490,000 was going to be spent. So what I want to know is what happens to the other $1.75 million? Where does it go? In the excess money that you collect in revenues, what happens to it? There's nothing showing anywhere that I can see of where does that money go. Um, this fiscal year, it's harder to tell how much extra you might have brought in, but just looking at Hazava Waters um, revenue for the calendar year last year, and again, it's hard because we're fiscal year and they're calendar year, but um, Hazava Water sold um, let's see, 7 million gallons more than they did the year before. So that would mean we should get revenue in the sewer collections of an additional 7 million gallons times the cheapest rate still gives us an extra $24,000 in revenue. Now, 
it's not a lot of money, but um, most of those were Enfield customers. There's only a small percentage, there's a couple hundred customers that are Summers in East Windsor in that possible seven million gallons. So some of it might have gone to another town, but most of it probably came to Enfield. Um, so the other question I had, you talked about the $250,000 per year payback of the 3.5 million that was borrowed from the town. I don't see that in the budget anywhere. Um, so I'm wondering where does that show up as, as paying it back? Um, and, and I don't think that's included in the 5.49 million, but it could be. I, I don't see it there. It's not in the capital improvements part of it or anything. Um, and if the budget decreased by 10.7%, I'm wondering why you're actually raising the rates because that means we're gonna have an extra 10.7 plus the increase in extra revenue than we really need. So that means we're gonna have even a higher surplus um, than, than we've actually budgeted for. Um, so, I, so I'm wondering what we're gonna do with that. Um, the revised budget of 2019 showed revenues of 6.434 million, which is still, at the current rates, is still $944,000 over what we're looking for this year. So again, you're raising the rates, and that's with those capital improvement projects that are listed on the budget included. So, so what's happening if we didn't even raise the rates, we'd probably get somewhere in the $940,000 additional revenue for, if we just kept at the same rates. Um, so unless we're putting this money aside for this future thing, but even the payment at 1.7 excess, we've already paid the first payment for, for 2023, and it's only 2020. So. Um, I think you've got to go through this. I think you've got to be a little bit more um, inquisitive as to where this money's going. I know it's a small part of the big budget, the big picture, but this is just as big as any of the fire districts and as big as a small town budget. So it's still important money. It's still taxpayer money, and I think it should have just as much importance as anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Young. Uh, good evening, Council. I'd like to go back to when I had asked about the balance down on the loan of the $2.5 million that the taxpayers continue to pay to WPC, which is supposed to repay the loan back to the town. Each year, you, you, the, town, the WPC struggles to pay it, and it's not, hasn't paid several previous installments. Is there any way the balance could be considered as seed money? I'd asked this question before. to the WPC and eliminate the debt and the burden from the WPC and the sewer bill and obviously the taxpayers. I'm sure the council, the town manager, and the town attorney could probably figure something out without violating some, violating some state statute. I don't know if you've looked into this, but I, I believe I asked that on May 6th probably or sometime in there, but I haven't heard an answer. I, I've also previously asked when you decide to raise revenue of $7.2 million, what is the breakout between the ready to serve charge and the usage charge to get us our total revenue? You had to have projected each one as to how much you're gonna collect so we have an idea of where you're coming from. Because I cannot tell you how many customers you're billing and from prior meetings, it doesn't sound like you really know either. Um, the last well, when I look at the budget, I'll agree with Karen. She mentioned that we're trying to raise 7.2 million and we only have uh, 5.1 in expenditures. Is it because this time we are not putting down the capital expenditures in one of the sections to come up with that? The difference isn't exactly the same, but maybe you could answer that question. Before, before you changed in 2014 to the the new way of collecting monies. We used to pay about one mil in our regular tax rate, maybe a little shade higher. 
And that's about $170 a year on a $200,000 value home, let's say, or something like that. It's now going to be about $360 a year, and that bumps it up to $2 million. And that's why I'm wondering, I think we've already paid the money in, the town people, for this loan that was advanced to the water pollution control. So couldn't we somehow reduce that figure and get rid of that loan and figure out how to take care of this and reduce the burden back to the taxpayers? That's all I have for now. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Young. Anyone else like to speak on this public hearing on the water pollution control? Sir. <coughs> Hi, uh, John Porcello, uh, 30 Monroe Road. Um, so I was shocked when I got the bill with the $31 in it. Um, all these things that we do up here that we're doing the estimates, they're all based on a 5 8 meter, right? Well, guess what? Birdland, all the star homes that were built in the 60s, they're all 3 quarter inch meters. So that means that we need to take that $30 and do $45, which is $180 this year that my taxes are going to be. Okay? I went from a $16 bill on 5k gallons to a six, uh, $48 bill. That's a 65% increase. Okay. I barely, I don't use a lot of water. <laughs> so why, when you look at the study from 10 years ago or from 2013, sorry, where the study had nothing to do with this, this base, uh, base rate and definitely not all these different meter sizes. And what makes a home that is a family of six different with a 5 eighths meter versus a 3 quarter meter? It, do, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and, and again, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, I've been, I've been in Enfield all my life, and, you know, my, my taxes go up about 3%, 3.5% a year, it's a couple hundred dollars property tax. Well, last year, my, my taxes went up 7.75% with this increase of the sewer tax, along with whatever happened to my property taxes. So, you know, up until, up until last year, I was taking a $200 hit a year, and last year I hit $535 in one year, property tax increase. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I think it was a little shady. I was talking to my father the night before, couldn't believe that that was in there, and all of a sudden I got the message for this meeting, so I felt like I just had to come and say something. Um, but we should definitely do some estimates on $45 instead of the $30, because that's not really showing, I mean, half the town's got to be three-quarter inch meters. I mean, there's, there's a lot of homes that are built in the 60s and above. Um, so um, that's all I got to say. But thank, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, like, anyone else like to speak for the council? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Crisatelli. I've lived here all my life. I live 57 First Avenue. Built my home in 2005. I am one person. I have a 1,498 square foot home. No, yeah, 1,490 square foot home. I live by myself. I don't water my lawn. I don't wash my car here. Two weeks out of the month, I'm not even in the state of Connecticut. I'm not even in Enfield. I'm staying in Springfield. Why, when you base this, I have a well. How did you come up with how to charge me? That's what I'd like to know. And how are you monitoring it? Because you can't. Is it fair that a single person of one living here two months out of, two weeks out of the year, a month, is charged the same rate because you can't monitor me? I don't water my lawn. I don't have to. I'm in clay. If I water my lawn, my landscaper's gonna get rich. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come up with these figures? And how is that fair? Is it based on a two-person household? What's the square footage? How big is their lawn? How many cars do they have? How did you, I, I really would like to know, I think I, I deserve to know how this number, how you determined what to charge someone when you couldn't monitor their water usage. Is that fair? Is that a fair question? We can respond. I mean, it's not a back and forth. We can take the oh, question okay. and respond. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's my question. I mean, pay it? Okay, but it doesn't seem fair. And it should be fair and just to every town employee or, and town and 
resident. I'm sorry. It should be, and it should be looked at because it's not fair and just. Not when you look at what I'm doing. My brother Ronnie doesn't water his lawn or wash his cars. Can't monitor him either. My brother Lewis was the same way. Anybody who has a well, there's got to be a better way to come up with a figure other than the median or it's a two-family house or it's the square footage. There has to be a better way because honestly, I can't afford to stay here anymore. I am looking at selling my home and I love my home. I designed it. I built it and I love Enfield, but I can't afford to stay here. The taxes keep going up. My paycheck doesn't go up. So how do you balance all of that? I understand things have to be fixed, but why aren't we maintaining them? JFK was a perfect example of that. Fermi's another one. All I saw on the forum was it was never maintained. Well, why? We put everybody on this council, we voted you in for us. I don't see where you're helping. And all you're doing is, and that woman was right, you go up and down anywhere. There's so many houses for sale. And I don't believe that it's just because the government of Connecticut is dri driving us into the ground. People can't afford to stay in Enfield. It's expensive and it's expensive to live. So how can you, you have to balance a budget, I get it, but there has to be a better way and it needs to be fair and just to everyone, not just a few. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be aggressive, but I'm really heated about this because as you know, you've never seen me here before and you probably won't see me here again because I really am contemplating putting the house for sale and leaving. We have to do something as a town to help the residents, not just keep making bills. Go down St. James Avenue. Here's another question I'd like to ask the council. We're all <coughs> saying we have to have money, right? Need money. Got to pay all this stuff. They're ripping up St. James Avenue to do I don't know what, but then we paid labor, we paid materials, we ripped it up, and now I hear they're going to rip up the, and it needs to be done, the entire St. James Road because it needs to be redone. Why didn't you coordinate it so all of that was done at the same time? That's a waste of resource. That's a waste of money. And it was a waste of time. It's just, it's not, when I see things like that, it makes me wonder who makes those decisions? If a common person can see it, why can't a board that we've elected see it and help us? Because this town's gonna become a ghost town because no one can stay. Not unless you're a millionaire. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? I'm sorry. Well, water pollution control. Sorry. That doesn't miss the council. How you folks doing? I'm James Morris. I live on Elm Street. So if you would, buy, you could job. just if you could just sit up. Uh, and you have the floor. It's on a water pollution water pollution control public hearing. Well, I I hope so. Okay, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Um, I think you guys are doing a great job. I really do. I can't say enough about it. I really can't. You guys got so much on your mind and you guys are doing so much. Um, I feel the same, I, I feel torn because uh, politics are hard, you know. Um, but it seems like the lady was just talking. Um, it doesn't seem like anything's planned out to its completion. I know it's hard to foresee winter, weather, but when you start tearing roads up and then they fall apart the same, you know, same the year following uh, because you're doing something with the water. I mean, I don't know how many times they tore up Elm Street uh, in front of my house because of the water that you guys have fixed. 
I have a huge puddle every winter that I can't keep the ice out of in front of my house. Uh, nobody wants to fix it, but Lord help somebody gets hurt out in front of my house. Um, but it, it just seems to me when you started this water thing, tax, whatever, it was so insignificant, nobody cared. But now it's becoming a bill that everybody has to care about. And it, it just seems to keep getting worse. And if you own property, you're responsible for anybody that lives there, whether they pay their bills or not, because you're going to go after the property owner instead of the person that actually generated the bill and paid their water bill. But they may want water in another town, so they pay that water bill, but you don't seem to go after them because if they move out of this town, they don't have to pay the taxes anymore on it. They don't have to pay anything attached to it. They just disappear. That property owner's stuck. And it's, it's getting to the point to where we're just throwing more money into it. And we don't want to talk about the other taxes that are coming down the road that nobody wants to talk about that these people probably don't even know about. But we need you guys to start looking out for us. You need you just to maybe scratch your head a little bit if it just doesn't sound right before you make that big decision. Uh, the state wants their money, I get it. Federal government, they're going to want theirs. And, and you guys have to do something to get yours, too. I get it. And you're the low guy on the pole, so it's harder for you to make sense of it. And you, and you have to face us, which I give you a lot of credit for doing that. But if you don't feel good in your own town because it's just getting out of control, you don't feel like you have a word, you don't have a say on what's going on, and people just aren't listening to you anymore, and they're just going off doing whatever they want. I, I can't even tell you how many times they've tore streets up around my house. And then they tear them up again the next year. They put pavement down to cover what they did, and they're tearing it back up because it's got potholes. Now, whether it's a water or a sewer or a gas or whatever, stuff should be planned out. That's all I'm saying. What I do, I want, I want to reemphasize, you guys are doing a great job. I mean, town wouldn't be what it is if, if you weren't. But I think you really need to maybe just spend a little bit more time thinking about what the people that brought you into this town and voted for you to do. And in Thompsonville's tough. The outer sides, I don't know how many times you guys did the, the presidents, the dead presidents. I mean, that road, sidewalk, the road, I mean, it's just, it, we don't even want to talk about it. It's just ludicrous. But there's just too much going on. And we need you guys to start looking out for us before you do those decisions. I wish you all a good night. And thank you again for sitting up there, sitting over here. I guess you guys are the voters, right? <laughs> but uh, And listening to us complain because we, we need that here. We do. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Anyone else like to speak for the council? Going once, going twice. Declare the public hearing closed. So we have to get to the video. Um, we're going to move right into the regular meeting. Right, we are five minutes behind, so. Okay. Does that curtain go up? Uh, uh, and the people that had some questions about Mrs. Crisatelli, just if you can wait till the next meeting, I'll get you some answers, but we can't answer it here. Okay, yep, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Just let me know when the next meeting is. It's starting right now. Oh, yeah. So uh, call the regular meeting Monday, June 3rd to order. 706. Uh, prayer will be by Councillor Denny. It won't be a prayer tonight, but I'd like your attention. Uh, uh, on June 6th, 75 years ago, was D-Day. And um, there was a lot of sacrifices made. One in particular uh, that hit me in the face was uh, U.S. casualties in five days from uh, the 6th of June to the 11th was uh, almost 9,000 casualties. So I'd like to just uh, take a moment uh, to remember all those people who um, suffered and died. 
And also, if you uh, run into a World War II veteran, which there's uh, almost uh, 500,000 of them still living, they must be, they're all over 90-something. Uh, just take a moment and uh, think of the sacrifices that made us all uh, do what we do here in uh, peace. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilor Bosco? Here. Councilor Sakala? Councilor Crisati? Here. Councilor Davis? Councilor Denny? Here. Councillor Kiner? Here. Mayor Ludwig? Here. Councillor Muller? Here. Councillor Sfraza? Here. Councillor Suzak? Here. And Councillor Ungeyer? Here. We have nine in attendance and two absent. Uh, I move on to item four, fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, please move orderly. We have an exit in the back of the room. We can either go left or right out the door, or to our left, you're right out that door, down the first door to our left, you're right, down through the stairs and out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Moving on to item five, minutes of preceding meetings. Do we have a, a motion to approve special meeting May 11, 2019? So by Councillor Denny, yeah. seconded by Councillor Muller. Is there any additions, deletions, corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Seven in favor, one abstention. Do I have a motion to approve a special meeting May 20th, 2019? So by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Excuse me, is there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Seven in favor, one abstention. And do I have a motion to approve the regular meeting of May 20th, 2019? Councillor Ungar. Seconded by, Second. by Councillor Muller. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Seven in favor, one abstention. Moving on to item six, special guest. For tonight we have from Cox Communications, Sandra Zarkowski. Please come up at this time. Mayor, just by way of introduction, we at the last meeting had a present, well, uh, resolution and presentation by a group that's going to be doing public service announcements for the town six over the next two years and also we've outreached and we had um, Kasha and our IT uh, director Mr. Russell go to Cox Communications to see what they had to offer they were very wonderful and they had uh, great resources for us to use with our staff and volunteers so we invited Sandra here just to give us a little uh, glimpse about that program that we'll be participating in coming up this year welcome and you have the floor Hi, and it's my pleasure. Um, I always love to talk about what we do at Cox Public Access, and um, I'm really happy to have had the group come forward and say that they'd like to do some shows about what goes on in this town and what makes this town so great to live in. It, uh, your economic committee would like to come in and actually talk about uh, why people would want to live in Enfield, and uh, we'd be very happy to help them make that happen. Um, uh, Cox runs everything with volunteers, and we provide free training and free use of our equipment and free use of our studio to do any kind of public TV shows. Anybody in our town is eligible to take workshops with us and actually produce their own show or work on a show that's already existing, and we've got a few new shows starting up pretty soon, so we'd like to get some workshops going, and we'd love to have some volunteers come through to make that happen. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of you that are sitting right here have been on our show at one time or another or have had your show. Um, so like I said, we want to make sure that everybody knows that we provide free training, free use of equipment. We'll teach you how to produce a show. Um, we have some people, a core group already, that's ready to come forward and try to pull some volunteers together to make a show happen that will talk about Enfield. Um, tourism, I believe, is one of the things we're going to talk about, what, what kind of things go on here, what kind of events we have to offer. 
whatever. We can talk about things that go on in this town. We have a big 4th of July uh, celebration every year that's run by volunteers. There's a lot of positive things that go on in this town that um, not just Enfield, but surrounding towns and people that are looking to relocate might find um, this show of interest as to what might interest them in this area. Anything else that I can... Any questions? questions? Any questions? Just curious on timing on maybe the first PSA or? Well, PSA is separate, but we're going to be working with her and getting volunteers together to be trained so we can start put together. She said we're going to concentrate on, th on things going on in Enfield, 4th of July, Mount Carmel, other events that we can showcase and utilize their studios to put those programs together. So we're very uh, excited about it, and Kosh will be in touch. We'll be starting now that the budget's behind us in the next couple of weeks. If we have people that are willing to be trained, they can use our cameras to go out and shoot PSAs if they want. We can do PSAs in the studio. Um, we can help you learn how to you know, write for them and shoot them and edit them and actually put them on. Anything that is nonprofit or the benefit of the town, uh, we can help you out with that. Great. Any questions? Hearing on. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Moving on to item seven, public communications. Uh, again, this is the regular meeting, so you can speak about anything that was on your mind, not just water pollution control. Um, again, we just ask that you refrain from personalities. You have five minutes the first time up, three minutes the second. We have an hour for public communications. If it goes that long, it would be roughly till about 8, 12-ish. So anyone like to speak for the council? Mr. Young. Good evening. Welcome, uh, sir. Tonight, George Young, uh, Holly Lane, Enfield, Connecticut. Tonight, with the PGA Tournament and the Travelers Championships this month, I'd like to start the evening on a positive note and do what Mr. Crisotti does so often, which is to compliment one of our sports teams or members. I'd like to recognize the Greater Enfield Golf League. It is one of the longest continuous running golf leagues in the country. It started its 56th consecutive year of play this year. It is a group of 108 individuals who play on 12 business or club sponsored teams. Members of these teams range in age from 20 to 80 plus and play nine holes of golf each Thursday evening. The team sponsors are many familiar names in the local area, which I like to mention at this time. Ambit Energy, Ardeoli Dodge Chrysler, Constitution Cable Products, Control Module, Gray's AA Club, Jared Insurance, Kennedy Tool, Mike's Auto, Pepsi, Ringside, Springfield Family Chiropractic, and Wealth Preservation Group. They have been contributing in a positive way to Enfield since 1963, and really I've never heard much recognition in town, so I just wanted to mention it. I know a couple of teams currently have a, an opening so I would encourage anyone to consider joining. The players come from all walks of life, including carpenters, electricians, attorneys, policemen, accountants, and many retired and employed individuals. So that's the end of my positive notes. The, account the accountants are the A players? B players. All right. At this time, uh, could we get an update tonight on the Rhodes 2015 project, as it is now June, and I see no shovels in the ground on St. James Avenue. Please identify who the contractor is and when will they start St. James Avenue. Will they finish before December 1st, 2019? I hate to go through another winter with this nightmare, since now I believe the uh, Connecticut Water Company has finished their work. Has the road area of 30 St. James Avenue section been looked at yet for the consistent water content issue in the road? And if so, what was the conclusion? Will it be a Connecticut Water Company problem or is it the towns? Before the final approved budget is published in September, will the finance department summarize by category or of expenses so we can see this summary as I have previously requested? I know we're going to have an opportunity to speak on June 12, 2019 regarding the roadway reconfiguration on Route 5 between Grant Street and University Place. 
Would the council or the town manager enlighten us tonight as to one, is this already a done deal? And are we only there to learn about the project? Two, will there be a discussion about safety when passing school buses? And what I see is a long stretch of one-way Route 5 highway where the buses make frequent stops to allow students to embark and disembark the buses. And three, do we have to register in advance to speak? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Um, the people had voiced their frustration at the water pollution meeting, uh, I mean the water uh, charges, the bills. It's easy to understand why. Most of us in town who pay our taxes have to live within a budget. You guys don't seem to realize that. You don't seem to realize that you should be living within a budget. And instead of just constantly going into my pocket for more money, for whatever the, the thing is you're trying to do, try to do it more effectively and, and, and more reasonably. And we go back to the, the, the thing I keep saying. If, if, if you get state grants, that's not free money. It doesn't grow on trees in Hartford. It comes from us. Why do you think they're going out and, and putting tolls in? They want tolls because they, they're giving us more money for grants than they can afford. Their revenue's down. Revenue will go down continually if you keep pressuring the people to, the, 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 the price of houses goes down, even if people sell. The prices of houses are going down. People come here and they hope that you'll listen. But my, my uh, feeling is, in all the times I've been coming here for years, oftentimes you don't listen. It's, it's all this greed, like JFK, putting all of that money into that building that you didn't need to do because you got a grant. Now, the grant is going to cost us Whatever, whatever the dollars come out, $30 million. We could have done it for 16, but we're getting 89. So is that greed? We didn't need it? That's, those are the kinds of things that you could do more efficiently and not have to keep raising the cost. Of, you know, when you had the uh, c uh, consultants come in, uh, was it Curran and somebody, I forget the names, they came in and come up with all of these prices that was supposed to be good for the water thing, and now you, you get the same people doing it for the public works. When you start dividing all of these things from the ad valerum and, and, and add to it a, a separate charge, it's still a tax. And when you talk about our, our town manager last uh, meeting said, you know, when you look at it, the amount of money that they raised is really small percentage of the entire budget. But you could say that in reverse, too, and say that, well, you, you spent that much more that you didn't need to spend. It, 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 it just, it's very frustrating to see these costs keep raising. And, and then, I, I, you know, you got unfunded mandates. So the, the state says they're going to do like the circuit breaker, and then they would, you know, renege on that. Why they renege on it? Because they're shoveling out grant money to everybody. We'd be so much better off if we didn't have grants, because that would force you to live within your means. That's what we all have to do. We have to live within our means or move out. Um, and I'll go back to the hot patch machine. I've still not seen that hot patch machine being used. We spent the money for it. It was supposed to do a good job on, on especially in the colder weather, to, to put a hot patch down. I've never seen it being used. So for, for all of those reasons, the frustration level is, in my opinion, very easy to see. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I don't think you're listening anyway, so I don't know why I waste my time. Anyone else like to speak for the council? 
Anyone else going one, sec, for the second time? Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Declare public communications, public communications closed. We move on to item A, Councilor Communications. Councilor Bosco. <clears throat> okay, I just want to maybe maybe set some things straight. Um, some of the stuff that Mrs. Cristatelli and the other gentlemen and uh, I, no, I should say Miss Cristatelli. Uh, when uh, when we go back and you talk about like the the junior high being in disrepair, actually the town council for many years paid for them repairs on there and we had previous school boards not like the ones we have right now the board we have right now works very well with the uh with the town council but uh the town council was putting money in to get repaired in the school once you give them money they can spend it on anything they want and they weren't spending them on the repairs and it, it, we, there's, we can't have a talk back and forth, but I will be more than glad after. You can give me a call or meet me in the hallway, and I'll, I'll talk to you about it. So the town of Enfield did pay for these repairs. They just didn't get done. Uh, the uh, thing with George and the uh, mill rate, where we used to pay a mill for the the, the sewer, but that was, you know, everyone keeps saying, well, I don't, mow, I don't water my lawn. My lawn don't take uh, sewage. But before that, when you had that one mil, mil tax rate, you were paying it on your car. You were paying it on your motorcycle. If you did anything and you, you know, businesses had to pay it on their personal property. So all that stuff before you were paying for it, you just didn't know it. So, you, so well, I, again, there, there's no back and forth. Um, you know, so people were paying this, this bill, but they were paying it for things that they didn't. You, I don't know if you may be able to get a meter put in, which would, would meter the flow, because there is no way other than an average that, that they have, and that's how they came up. The average household paid so much money. Um, when you're talking about streets getting dug up, well, we don't own the water mains, we don't own the gas mains. So what happens is we've been working hand in hand with the water company and the gas company trying to get them to do the repairs before the road is done. But we can't force them to fix their water mains, we can't force them to fix their gas mains. So as time goes by, if something deteriorates, you may have a brand new road and that water main deteriorates gets cracked because you know when they when they compact the brand new road gets dug up it's not the town it's not our water main but we can't force them to fix it so where you're talking about st james getting dug up paved dug up paved well again we're not doing them repairs but that's where we saved you money because we worked with the water company to get all the mains and all the, the gas work done in the street. So this way, when the brand new road goes over it, 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 it it's going to be, it should where it shouldn't break. Now, we can't cut a road and leave it open for a year. So what they do is they cut the road open. At their expense, they have to patch it which doesn't mean that a month later from there, they're going to do a little more work next to it and they dig their patch up. But that's for public safety, so the roads are constantly have blacktop on them. So that's why they have all them patches and all that stuff in the paving that was done on uh, St. James so that they could make the road as safe as possible and you're not driving on a gravel driveway or uh, roadway. And what happens is we had, like, Mullen Road was really bad. We had to, because we didn't have the funds and we didn't have the... Um, the means in the engineering at that time, the road wasn't engineered to, to do it. So we had to grind it. We had to pave it so the road could be safe. And then we can get back at it at another time when we had the funds to do it correctly and, and redo the road. So you may look like things are getting done over and over, but a lot of that stuff, town of Enfield has <clears throat> no control over. Water mains belong to the water company and uh, gas mains belong to the gas company. Um, 
I'm trying to remember everything else. On the sewer tax, I'm going to vote no tonight. I don't think we should be doing meter size. I voted no last year because of the water main size. But that that's there. That's how they made their calculations. But ultimately, you need X amount of dollars at the end. So you have to fill and make it. So if you did three quarters and you, you had the half, though, then they would have to come up here and this one would come down. So it, it's all a balancing act. And we do think of things ahead of time. We do try to, to save you money. Um, if we didn't, last year you would have had a huge tax increase because the state cut us a lot of money. And we do depend on the monies that the state gives us. And it's not an infield problem because if you look at the, the budget the town manager had posted, what the municipalities um, in Connecticut, their tax rates are, and we're not the lowest, we're not the most expensive, we're somewhere in the middle. But Enfield offers a lot of services that other towns don't. And someone's got to pay for the services. They voted at the last meeting for $125,000 to save the adult daycare. That costs every single person some money. But if you're someone that uses that that service, that service is invaluable. Would you be willing to get rid of that service? Would you be willing to get rid of any services you're getting today to keep the, the, the rates down low? And that's where we're going to find in the, uh, the future, we're going to have to have a balancing act because there's going to be some things where people are going to lose some services so we can keep the taxes at a, a level rate because you know, we need X amount of money. Uh, you know, the union contracts say everyone gets an, a raise every year. Um, the state of Connecticut, we're, we're going through it with, with the water pollution control plant. They say we need a berm. It's going to cost us a ton of money because the state's mandating that. There's a lot of things that happen that you guys don't realize. And it's probably just as bad if we don't tell you ahead of time because automatically, you know, we got so much information running through our head and you go over it and over it and over it, you almost feel that everyone else knows what you did. But when you have an issue like that, it's nothing. Just call. You know, each one of us, our phone numbers are there. Just make the phone call. And, 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 and no, I, I, can't, I can't go back, I can't go back and forth, but I can tell you one thing, I answer every single phone call I get. And, and my phone is, this is my, my, my phone. I use my cell phone number. Anybody that goes and, and looks up my phone is my cell phone number, and I use my cell phone number for business. So I make sure I answer every single phone call. And if someone leaves a message, I call them back. And most of the time, if they don't leave a message, I always call that back because it's a customer that may have a problem, and I make sure I, I answer it. So if you have any other questions that aren't answered, either after the meeting, I'll be more than glad to talk to you, or you can call me at another time. And um, I would 860-982-8827. And I will answer the phone call. And if, you, if I don't answer the phone call, leave a message and I will call you back. You know what they say, Helen? So, well, you know, I've mean I, I've met worse and meaner, so I'm I'm okay. Uh, Jack, they do use it in the winter. They're afraid to use the patching machine in the summer because of the motorcycles. They're afraid someone's going to fall on the stones. But we do use it in the winter, and it works very well. Um, I think I got everything that I remembered that I, I was going to talk about. Uh, but I do have some other things. Uh, at, uh, through the mayor to the town manager, uh, Abbey Road and Monroe, they went and they fixed the curb. It's all washed out again. Uh, we need to either put a curb in there or something. Uh, I just had uh, someone come down to me, my cousin. Uh, Teville Cemetery, she says it's, the, the road is so bad. She called the church and they told us the road that was going in that's all pothole and beat up is ours. So can we check on that? At least we got to make it so it's, it's safe for travel. And um, to Ann Street, we fixed the catch basin a while back. It eroded out again. They went in and they patched the sides of the catch basin, but they didn't put 
uh, any dirt to back it up. So if some kid's walking off of the curb, it, it's a pretty good tri uh, trip hazard. Either that or it washed back into the basin. So if we can take a look at that. And um, I, I, like I said, I, you got my cell phone number. That's anyone out there, call me. And uh, I, I, will, I will hopefully answer it. I mean, I hope it's not going to be a five-hour long phone call, but we'll, we'll get you till, you're, till you get your answers. Okay, thank you very much. And all set? I'm all set. Councilor Denny. Uh, through the mayor and the town manager, could, we, uh, could I have Donald come up and explain uh, some of these streets and when they're going to start? No, he's going to, uh, I would not want to take him out of order. We have other presentations this evening. Um, he's going to be coming and giving an entire road 2020 project oh, yes. uh, at the August meeting, and he'll answer all of these questions at that time. I don't want to put him on the spot to be I will answering try things to without answer. preparation. George, uh, um, I still, I'm good. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, sorry. St. James Avenue will be done this year. Uh, the contractor off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, it's the same contractor as doing Ganey Terrace. Marshall Drive and Joan, uh, Till Street uh, in District 4 anyway, Till Street, um, Birchwood and Birchwood Circle. And if I missed any, maybe they can yell at me. Uh, they're in the process of being done. The water company did a disaster on that road over a year and a half it took. <clears throat> the water that's leaking in the ground, when we start to repair it, we will do the water company will discover that it's their problem because it's coming up and there is a leak there at the bottom. And I, I think the engineers and uh, everybody knows about that. So St. James was at the end of the list. Uh, I tried to fight to get it ahead of time. Nobody wanted to do it, and it's being done this year. It will be done before December, I promise you. And... Uh, there's anything else. Oh, one more thing. I just, uh, what, what Joey said, um, Pine Grove has a brand new street. And as soon as they paved it, one week later, we had a gas leak there. They had to put a patch. The, 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 the Eversource came and dug the street up. Brand new, never was driven on. I never even was on the street and saw him digging with, the, with a gas leak there. I mean, those kind of things we can't avoid but st james will be done thank you see mr Good danny you know as much as public works he's going to be coming up to do my presentation he, if he wants to elaborate um mr noons can do it at that time that was my point first i'm going to take care of business i'm going to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items b2 through b4 e f g h i j k l m n o and P to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion to suspend the rules and move to vote. Second. Do I have a second by Councilor Muller. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Nine in favor? Zero against. Okay. Right, you still have the floor. Okay. I have one more thing. And actually, if Mr. Lee would like to come up to the, because he has more information than I do. Well, I don't think we invite anyone. We to explain, I. Oh, it's public. Okay. Yeah, so you, okay. Yeah. All right. On Sunday, the Hazardville Institute right. will be celebrating its 150th anniversary. There'll be a presentation at the Holy Trinity Church at 5:30. Um, Mr. Bill Hosley will be doing that. He is a um, historic preservation expert. Um, they will be doing tours. At, and you see it up on the screen. They'll be doing tours at the Hazaville Institute from 3 to 5. So uh, come on down, see what's going on. Hazaville Institute is the historic anchor of the Hazaville Village. A lot of the people that are involved in the Hazaville Village have been doing this for decades. And we're hoping that we can kind of lasso that building in and get it open in a, an expedient amount of time. The, the back addition that people have seen go up is the um, addition that will hold the little lift and it will be their secondary um, means of egress. So it's a safety and accessibility. So come on down, see it. Colonel Hazard donated the building to the town. The town's been taking care of it. See its history. It's been everything from 
a school to a youth center to a library. It's, you know, and I guess that's one of my things that the only thing we can count on is change. So, and hopefully it'll be something else in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Grisotti. All right, for the people that, uh, that talked earlier tonight, either it was at the public hearing or for uh, communications, um, from George, George to Jack to, to everybody that spoke tonight, uh, we're going to listen to what, what you say. And uh, I do listen, Jack. All right, you know, you know we, we hear you. You know, uh, but you know, we're up here. We we listen to what everybody does have to say. George, thanks for bringing up that Greater Hartford Golf League. Uh, the, Enfield. The the Greater uh, Enfield Golf League. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it's pretty important to our community, and uh, thank you for being positive. <laughs> Appreciate that. A um, couple other announcements that that I uh, just want to mention. Tonight, um, Liz Davis uh, is not in attendance here today because her daughter is receiving a state award as a scholar leader, uh, which is put on by the Connecticut Association of Schools uh, at AquaTurf tonight. And I just wanted to shout out that her daughter, uh, Betsy Davis, and Madeline Bouchard from JFK are getting recognized tonight for being scholar leaders from JFK. So congratulations to those two. Um, another thing that I would like to mention uh, coming up this week that's going to be starting at the Enfield uh, Square on Elm Street, and it's going to come up Route 5 is the, uh, the Connecticut State Special Olympics Summer Games Torch Run. Uh, uh, the Enfield Police, Allied Rehabilitation Services, and uh, Enfield Allied Stars uh, are all going to be taking turns running with the torch for uh, the Connecticut Special Olympics State Games, which are going to be held at Southern Connecticut State University uh, this weekend. Uh, opening ceremonies are Friday night, and the uh, Enfield Stars team will be competing in swimming, soccer, and track. And the uh, the team is ready to go. Team is all set. There are trained for the last three months for this event that are that is coming up so we wish wish them the luck if you have that opportunity to uh, go out and see the the torchlight run every year uh, they've been doing it for years now it's quite impressive and I know that Carl has been involved with that for for many many uh, years uh, I do have uh, two other concerns uh, first of all through the mayor to the town manager and this is something that we had mentioned in regards to uh, the parade um, first of all it was brought to my attention by some residents that the division lineups this year especially for the memorial day parade that we just had uh, usually the, the lineup is on the east side and the majority of the divisions were lined up but i did notice and i had some residents complain to me about you know that some people were setting up like in their front yard and it was on both the east and west sides and usually the lineups are, are on the opposite side where St. Joe's residence is and uh, you know placement of the portable toilet in somebody's front yard which was a total mistake <laughs> uh, and I know that won't happen again uh, but that was brought to our attention and you know you know, parades are a big part of our community, and we, we still have to uh, be cognizant of the residents um, during that time frame. Also, on the corner of uh, Pearl and Orchard Hill, on 227 Pearl and Orchard Hill, um, there's a, I don't know, pothole or uh, at the bottom of their driveway from, uh, you know, the plowing from the winter. There's pretty much divot. If you guys could just maybe take a look at it, DPW, just take a look at that that area. I did get a complaint um, on that also. My, my my last other comment is the Commission on Aging is still you know their senior home repair is still accepting applications for the work to be done in senior homes, minor repairs, and especially now that the weather is getting a little warmer out, uh, 
you know, if people need their air conditioners in their windows, call and set an appointment through social services. Okay, thank you. Councilor Kiner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the uh, town manager, I want to thank you, Chris, for uh, using the cloud of your office uh, to convince the owners of that vacant uh, garage on the corner of 190 and Broadbrook Road uh, to clean the place up. They scraped the paint off, they repainted, and there was also a, a, a health, I think, hazard involved there, too, with the uh, a stall being open and vagrants using it. Uh, that's been locked up, and I, I appreciate uh, your, um, your work on getting that done. Thank you. And just on one other measure, uh, before the uh, council meeting began, I was talking to, uh, to Mr. Noons, and um, I'd gotten a couple of calls from senior citizens, uh, and uh, they were saying that it's very difficult for them oftentimes to bring their, their uh, tipper barrels down to, the, um, uh, down to the street and then back again. And uh, Don informed me that there is a program uh, that I was unaware of uh, through social services uh, that helps these people uh, when they need this help to, uh, to bring their tipper barrels again down to the street and back. And I think that uh, for a lot of senior citizens who are, who are handicapped, um, this is a very important program. And uh, Don, I thank you for that information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Maybe we'll get this in a town manager's report. I know we talked about the breakout between the uses fee and the uh, the uh, base fee. I don't know if we can comment on that tonight or maybe at the next WPCA meeting, which will be on next meeting. So maybe we can put that. I know John has done that work, so maybe we can just put it into public record. And uh, so, for, you know, people know, for Mr. Young, I know he's asked that question. You know, and uh, also, too, if it's not tonight, can we have the breakout? Why, you know, the deficit situation we inherited as part of the, again, to do the math for people. So the questions on the math tonight and why there's, you know, again, it's important for us to reduce our expenses. We also have to raise revenue to make up for some of the deficit that has been occurred over the five-year period, which maybe people are forgetting from the presentation that we, we did back in, in uh, I think, January timeframe, which is on your website, too, by the way. I told you. Know, and, and the other thing, too, is that, again, you, on April 15th, you made the public announcement of the water pollution control along with the budget. So I don't want anyone to think that this is some hearing that this wasn't in public information. It was a press release. It was a town council meeting. It was on TV. And we had multiple different meetings. And you also had the meeting, the first meeting right after, where public could come back and forth. And you actually got some questions. For Mr. Young, for example, asking some good questions in public where you could have that back and forth. So again, we did have meetings. It was publicized. And you know, I understand that you know, people, no, one wants, no one wants to pay more in taxes. But again, this was done back in April. I want that to be clear. And uh, the only other thing, again, is that I want to just congratulate the Enfield baseball team for making it to the third round of the baseball tournament. The softball team made it to the tournament as well, as did the boys' volleyball. So again, some of the investments people are talking about are actually getting fruit as, our, again, our kids are doing well in school, you know, and again, p participating well in some of the state tournaments. And again, I think, uh, you know, the, the baseball game that was down at the Yard Goats, anyone had a chance. It was really done well for the kids. They had them on a the big screen. They showed pictures of the kids. And Enfield travel well. There's a lot of people from Enfield there, and they did a good job. So I will end on that note. And, I'll, and I have a question, Maria, in the town attorney. We get there first. Moving on to town manager report. Um, before we get the project, I'm assuming you want to answer a few questions before we can bring up people, or how you want to do it. Uh, uh, we could general. answer questions first on if you have any other uh, issues. I'll just. Um, elaborate on Mr. Kiner's uh, comments that we did identify that as a need for some elderly residents uh, for assistance with their tipper bills, and we do have that program. It was to have gone up on the website. I know Donald was working with Maya, and if, they, if it didn't go up, we'll make sure it does, because that's a great resource for those people who need that assistance. Uh, in regard to parades, as you said uh, previously, we get blamed for a lot of things. We don't organize the parades, but we'll certainly share that with those who do organize it, because I think this year with Mr. Plamond not being uh, present, there's probably uh, some disruption in, in, of responsibility. We'll make clear to them. I'm sure that was unintended, but we'll pass it along. I'm sure they've already heard, but we'll make sure we reach out to them. So, if that's it, any anyway, other questions on the EPAR report? <laughs> Moving on to the Head Start Stout report. Sure. Uh, and what I'll say is, I'll have a lot of these questions 
Um, and I know we all get frustrated and the residents do too. Um, a lot of these questions have been asked and answered and we've put them in presentations, we've had people address them. But unless it really affects you and until you really have the question, most people don't realize or not aware of it. But I would uh, point out that it would be beneficial for people with questions on the entire sewer use to go to our October uh, presentation with Wooded and Kern and it documents and goes over. Every public hearing, every council meeting, every subcommittee where all these matters were discussed, which are also recorded and there are minutes of for people as a good reference. So most all of the things when people come up and ask, why didn't you consider this? Well, they, all of these questions I heard this evening were considered. Unfortunately, as you said, uh, Mayor, and I think Joey and uh, even Mr. D there's no perfect solution to this. Uh, in trying to be fair and equitable one group, you're always going to have somebody else who's affected a little differently. So there's no way that one size fits all in these type of matters. And I know the council struggled with it, whether it's a flat fee or usage and base rates, none of it. People have wells, people uh, have rental property, there are commercial, there are, there are our, our residents. There's no one shoe, uh, you know, size fits all. So the council tried to do the best, and even with these next increases, it's not going to be perfect, but I think they tried based on the input from our uh, consultants to make it as equitable as possible, and it can always be adjusted in the future. But we do have costs. John will address the questions uh, that were poised this evening. We have looked at the issue of paying uh, for giving the loan that we owe the, the town. It's not workable because we have to then expend all of our fund balance first and before we do that, and that's not something we want to do. Uh, I want you to know when we looked at uh, the capital, it was reduced by half a million. Those rows, that $500,000 we didn't put in, has to be spent. We have to have new sewer lines, and that's just a down payment on it. All of our pump stations, at the cost of millions of dollars, which weren't in the referendum and aren't in the upgrade, have to be funded. So I know when people come up, it's frustrating for us too not to be able to give the answers right away and bring up the staff. And it lingers out there sometimes that, you know, why weren't these things addressed? What are we doing? They were addressed and thoroughly. But it's sometime there is that deficit of getting the information out to people at the time when it becomes um, that they're interested in it. So we'll continue to make those efforts to communicate. Um, to that end, you know, we do work on a lot of projects. Let me tell you, doing the Water Pollution Control Center upgrade, we meet every single week with our architects, with our project managers, with myself and the assistant manager. It's a daunting task. We don't have a building committee to do the water pollution control. We also have the JFK building committee, which is meeting. And, you know, that's going to be a huge project coming online. So the town is, you know, doing a lot. We're still, and we will do the presentation on Road 2015 and the future 2020 road project. That's a huge undertaking of staff time. So the town does do a lot of things and they do it well. One of my pet peeves, like a lot of the residents and you, is when we do a brand new road and it's beautiful and we've told the water company and we've told the gas company and let us know if you need any repairs it's done it's pristine and the next week they're coming in to rip it up and we they are state entities that have all kinds of immunity and statutory rights that we can't fight against when they come in and want to do it they're going to do it and if they want to do it the next week they can do it and if they want to do it the third week they can do it and it's frustrating but we have very little control we try to coordinate with them but they don't always respond to us so we share that frustration um, two major projects again these are big undertakings they have big am uh, ramifications to the townspeople and we try to be up front and forthright one is the move from head start taking the Head Start program and moving it to Stowe and bringing back in students that we are now transporting out of town at a great expense and a great cost emotionally to those students. Now, a few months ago, the Board of Ed came and they had an expert group do a presentation and basically they received a standing ovation because it's a great idea. I knew it was going to fall to us, though, on the town side to logistically make it happen. So we've been meeting every Monday and we met this morning, Board of Ed, all of the people concerned on the town side, I, I like to say we're doing the brawn, the Board of Ed and the Scholastic, and the, they're doing the brains of the operation. So if people have questions, they could continue and should continue to talk to the superintendent and to the board, because they're talking about all of those things scholastically and programmatic and where the classrooms will go. What I'm doing and what the town is doing is making sure that Stowe can accommodate this new group of students coming in from Head Start and not diminish, but enhance the program for the Head Start children and for the Stowe children. And we're committed to doing it. We identified from the get-go a few issues uh, at the building. Donald is here to address them because we're not going to allow this move to go forward unless we do it, as I said, and address all of the needs of the students that are going to be in that building in September. He's going to do a presentation. I'll identify to you four areas that we had concerns about and we are addressing. 
One is the parking, which was already difficult. Two is the busing of the children there. <coughs> uh, th four, three, three, air conditioning, because we're going to be utilizing the gymnasium. And four, storage at the facility, and I guess to a lesser degree, bathrooms. So Donald has been tasked, and we've been meeting with his subcommittee every Monday. Um, we're making great strides on all of those issues, but he's going to give you an update primarily on parking and on the air conditioning. Donald? Talk about the food, too. Hmm? Talk about the food, too. Food? Remember? You always want to talk about food. <laughs> All right, he has, he has a good story on food, but uh, you want to do it before or after? Do it now, Donald. I'll do it before. So to take Lift us up. So to take a cue from uh, Mr. Young, starting off on a very positive note, on uh, May 19th, uh, to start Public Works Week, we had a food drive at ShopRite between, um, between 12 and or 9 and 3 o'clock. And during that time, we were able to collect 181 pounds of food through donations through there. Um, but we also collected $689 uh, in donations from the people and also from uh, Local 1029. So out of that, $250 went to the infield food shelf along with the 181 pounds. But with that $250, they were able to buy, with their buying power, about 1,200 pounds of food with that. The other $439 went um, to Loaves and Fishes which again, with their buying power, is able to, buy, to purchase at least 2,500 pounds of extra food through that. So some of the people that helped were Lisa Ellis from the library, Doug Finger from RRM, Adam Bajoris from WPC, Adam Orzak and his wife Amy, uh, and my daughter Emmy were there, and also Peter Burke who um, organized everything. Peter's a 26-year employee. He also was a volunteer at North Thompsonville Fire Department, and now he's volunteering at Shaker Pine. So if you see Peter, who is very distinguishable by his handlebar mustache and similar hairdo as mine, you can pick him out very easily and say hello. So on a good note. So just wanted to share that. So thank you. Okay, so Chris was talking about parking. So we took a kind of an out-of-the-box approach through Chris's guidance about actually converting parking spaces in, in that circle. Um, so to utilize that circle um, to its advantage. So with there, we, there's, we were, I was able to actually, let me get my mouse going here, 15 parking spaces through here, uh, 11 on this side with two accessible stalls and 13 on this side. So we have a progress, we have on the south side, we have 34 spaces um, that, are, that will be paved, and we'll have two accessible stalls right here. There'll be new um, walkway to the flagpole and the like th through here. So again, we'll be able to gain, gain 38 spaces through there. We do have, fortunately, we have catch basins uh, that are already here, and we're able to pitch in and to use, the, to use that to our advantage to drain the water off uh, through there. So again, these will be paved. Now in the back, uh, we'll have 25 spaces through here, another 25 here, and nine and nine in the back. So all in all, with the total new parking spaces, we'll gain 102 new parking stalls with two accessibles in the front. We already have 30 spots on this side, 29 being regular stalls, one being accessible. And on the <clears throat> southeasterly side, if you were, is we have 44 parking stalls and three accessibles on this side. So all in all, total for this whole property, we're able to get in 175 parking stalls and have six accessibles. Uh, the area back in the back of the building is not going to be paved. We'll have to use millings through there. We have plenty at the transfer station. So we, we need to come up with some, well, I need to come up with some creative way for winter <clears throat> to ensure that cars park in a straight line, that it's easily removable for uh, buildings and grounds to go back there and plow it and maintain it. But um, that's minutia right now where the big picture is that, again, we'll be able to gain 102 new stall, 102 stalls uh, for this move, considering there's 34 in the front. So, so th that's going to be in park, and I'll just say that obviously there's a cost of, associated with this, and I know the council's committed that we have to make it work. Um, 
Mr. Dresick has been able to talk to the bus company. In our budget, we've allocated $100,000 for the buses before and after school program. Um, Mr. Dresick has met with the bus company. They will take on that responsibility, thus freeing $100,000 in funding from our budget for next year, which we will put towards this expense. I don't think it'll cover it completely, but it'll be a lion's share. So that's the funding aspect, and we'll keep you apprised when Mr. Nunes get f gets firmer figures. Well, we do have an you know we do have an opinion of probably cost right now and that's with a 10 percent contingency it's one hundred thirty five thousand dollars so we're close we're close sorry mr Crisati, you had a question and mike counselor turn your mic on please i'm sorry um how would you access the back parking lot considering the playscape over on on this are, are you going to be blocking off like where that playscape is no, we're going to utilize the west entrance right here and just keep it the same with how people just are parking right now. They're going in, just coming in through the back and parking. You'll be able to just follow that right around? Yes. Okay, perfect. And we'll All be right. looking. We have some other options of a, a perhaps a separate entrance, and we'll have to be looking at wetlands, depending <clears> on if we keep the program there together. But this will accommodate uh, all the needs for the upcoming year by the time we open, and we'll be looking at other solutions as well. But this will uh, address the concerns for the short term from when we open um, the end of August. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So if there are no further questions, we'll move on to air conditioning. It's We are required, and we haven't had air conditioning in the gymnasium, and so this actually is good because for the present program, we should have had it, and for the new program, we absolutely need it. Um, so it's a two-prong approach, and Donna will tell you where we are um, for the short term, and again, we have the long-term solution, and he can address that, and I'll, then I'll address the cost of that. <clears throat> All right, so there's two different concepts we're going with. One is obviously to try to get a permanent chiller in there before, let's say, August 15th, just to make sure that it's commissioned and the things like that. Um, and we are working with several HVAC companies right now that are on the state bid to try to get this done. Uh, one of them is Carrier. We're trying to work with the school department bids that they have. So we're, we're actively working on it. And with, with what is existing right now, it does not look like we will get the permanent solution by August 15th, just because of just the sheer amount of, of characteristics in regards to the existing equipment, to the space that needs to be chilled and the like. Uh, we are exploring design bid options right now. We could go with the possibility of a standard bidding project, but we'll know in the next week or two how we're going to proceed with that and what's the, the quickest route for that. Uh, our goal is to have this completed before the end of the year to utilize the Honeywell funds because they are available, and that's why I'm saying it's going to take probably six to, six to eight months to get this through, through design. Um, if there has to be building modifications, we don't know yet, but it, it's going to take us some time. But in the, but in the interim, we, can, we do have, we have developed an interim solution, and we're going to be, we could be using temporary chillers to ensure that the gym will be properly cooled, and they'll be by August 15th, 2019. We solicited four quotes. We've received two American Spot Cooling, so for one month from August 15th to September 14th, it's $7,500. From August 15th to October 14th, which is two months, it's fourteen four. And spot coolers was a little less on the two months. But spot coolers has a, a long list of demands uh, requiring like full replacement insurance, lifting of equipment, all electrical connections and the like. So American spot cooling is going to be, uh, if this is the desired route to go, we will have this on board by August 15th, 2019. So. <laughs> Temporary chillers, these are examples that they provided for us. This is on a trailer-mounted one. Um, the generator that you see here will not be needed since we will have power there already. We're not going to need that. It'll just be direct connected in. So we're not going to have that. So it could be on a trailer. It could be on the ground. Uh, it could be on something similar as this. All they're going to be doing is providing um, a similar structure to this with some ducting going in and out, and that's how uh, they will do it. And there's another larger unit where, again, there's three coming in. So. That is so the in regard to the funding, as Donald mentioned, we can use the Honeywell funds. We have about a hundred thousand dollars available. We'll see what this long term cost is. We will encumber that. We have to use it by January 1st. So because we know bidders are on the state contract, Mr. Wilcox has been involved in the meeting so that we can encumber that and uh, sign the contract and, and have that properly expended so we can utilize those funds. If it goes over, uh, we will let you know. Currently, the, you know, it, it, 
we need to adjust and do design work because it's about a 30 ton unit that's that's required to properly chill it but we will have the air conditioning in place for the children by the time the school is opened and throughout the, the, those couple of months where it'll be warm in the uh, end of the summer early uh, fall and then we'll do the long-term solution before uh, the next summer or before the warmer weather comes um, we've also addressed there was a concern for bathrooms for the faculty we identified an area um, and we already opened another adult bathroom that's up and running to assist the staff we've identified an area in the school um, that would be appropriate for another bathroom for children that wouldn't be a short term but we're looking uh, getting cost estimates to see how we could do that during the year it's not absolutely necessary but I think it's something that we would be desirous of having with the additional students we've talk this morning again about the kitchen the food all of that is on track whether or not we need to buy a freezer or we have a you know a, a existing that we can use within the education system remains to be seen storage was a concern there will be some outdoor sheds for some of the uh, items that are used seasonally but there's adequate uh, area inside that we've identified with our consultant mr. John Degg who's worked for the school department with mr. Gar and the fire marshals that's appropriate we have um, that available as well as partitioning um, from other parts of the school and school system so I think we had a very successful holistic approach to addressing all of the logistical concerns um, on Fridays those in charge of the scholastic the brains of the operation are keeping updates in regard to the program for Head Start and Stowe and they'll continue to do that we'll be posting our information on the managers website we're putting that newsletter as well so people can go there and we'll keep everybody updated as we proceed in regard to Head Start um, they submitted this plan today. They talked to the head building inspector. Um, there are minimal uh, modifications that need to be done over at the Head Start building before those students come in. Uh, we think, and Donald's been working with Mark Gar and their experts, we think that um, building and grounds will be able to do that work, and the school board has the funding and has committed it uh, for that purpose, so that will not come out of the town side. So we'll continue to update you, and any questions people have, continue to forward them to us, and uh, we're dedicated and committed to making this a successful program and transition for all of the students of the town. Any questions? Councilor Kiner. Out through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Chris, we put to rest a rumor that I keep hearing that the Head Start building uh, was built with or put together with federal funds. And the rumor that I'm hearing now is that the Federal Department of Education might be causing us problems because now this building is becoming a state or town uh, controlled building. Is there any validity to these rumors? Uh, I've that was one of the uh, threshold question months ago when Mr. Dresick proposed the program. He's inquired. That's part of his bailiwick in regard to his experts and people running Head Start. Uh, he's been assured that that is not the case. There was no impediment. There, there, there was federal funding expended. There's a 10-year window which has expired, and uh, he's Deputy been Mayor Mike he's been given the green light. We'll never be able to. And again, we'll, we're uh, I welcome these questions and I welcome the opportunity to publicly state it so people know that they are rumors. And um, if, the, if that were true, we, we would stop. There would be no ability to do this program. So that would be pretty simple. It would make my life a lot easier if they would come out and say we can't do it. Thank you for that information. Sorry, th sorry go ahead. Yeah, Chris is right. And also, uh, the building committee, that was part of the referendum that the town passed where we put all the additions on the elementary schools and on JFK. So basically, the head start was the town builds the building and they would fund the program. And that's always been kind of what we understood it to go forward when we were on the building committee. So it co corresponds with what Chris has for information. And I did, I did check again with Mr. Dresick Friday after we talked, and I, I checked again this morning, and he, he uh, reassured me that they have permission. Any other questions? Just one, one final comment. <clears throat> With, with all these questions that people have been coming up with and you know, rumors, all right, and, and the majority of these questions and rumors that, that are coming up, there's one thing that when we started this program, everybody gave it their blessing. And just like with any new program, a lot of people are apprehensive about change. And the bottom line is nothing will change if you don't want to change. So we're, we're, we're doing things, we're, we're being innovative, 
and we, we plod forward with it. If adjustments need to be made as time goes on, then we make them. But let's move forward with this and be positive. You know, I just want to say, I know you guys are working very close with the board. I mean, we've heard people comment about how we, you know, we don't, we're not commute working together or we're not, we don't plan things out. Here we are two or three years ahead of the curve doing this between a joint board and council uh, initiative. Uh, to Bob's point, we were all in a, everyone was briefed, every member of the board, every member of the council for six months. So this wasn't something that was just sprung out of the air. Three or four years from now, maybe not that long, you know, when, when regionalization is forced upon some of our school systems and maybe at some point we would have lost control of Head Start and lost control of, you know, providing quality special education and being a leader as opposed to someone who has to now send funds to other towns to, to, to fund our kids. You're talking, again, the check right now to crack is 1.6 million on average. That comes directly out of the people's local taxes. Comes directly out of your taxes. The money doesn't follow the child. And here we are, again, looking ahead, saying, look, we need to start this. This is an innovative program. It's going to provide a great program for our kids. We're working together with the council and the board every single week. Years prior, I think Councilman Bosco's made this point for many years when we didn't really even talk to each other in the past. We work to be, we meet weekly. There's, to Bob's point, there's bumps in the road. The hardest part about any plan is implementation. That's the hardest part of any plan. And I appreciate the fact that you folks are listening. I mean, you heard that the parking came out of a meeting, a joint meeting with the board about two months ago. And here you are already addressing it. We do listen. In fact, we're actually very proactive about it. And yet you still, and it's, it comes with a territory, you get the criticism. However, we are looking three years down the road right now. We're not looking about exactly right now. Three years down the road now, if we don't do this, our local budget even more so will be under pressure to be able to maintain our services at a very reasonable tax rate. That's what this is about, and it's about bringing kids home who are unfortunately are bust all over the state, who deserve to have their education in this town. And the other piece here that, again, we haven't made a big deal, I don't even think the board has made a big deal out of, every kid who goes to our school from when they're born to when they're 12th grade is going to get STEAM. Every child. That's important for people to understand. Every child has the same opportunity in this town. And you can debate whether we spend too much or we don't spend enough, but the bottom line is we are being very fair. And I am, a, I'm going to say, Paul, I'm 100% behind this. I hope we continue. We're looking forward. Yes, there's bumps in the road. And I appreciate the fact that you are willing to listen to those. Every Friday, a newsletter goes out. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the individuals on that newsletter. But again, I appreciate the update. Mm -hmm. I hope you'll continue to do this over the summer as we get closer to August. And again, I, again, I, I saw a rumor, again, a rumor of $750,000 for an air conditioning unit. That's some air conditioning unit, I'll tell you. That's some air conditioning unit. So I, again, these are the things that we have to continue to, again, let people know what we're doing and that we are listening. And we're trying to do it in a very cost-effective way, working together with our partners on the Board of Education to provide every child the opportunity they deserve in this town. That's why this is important. Appreciate you coming here and talking about this. Because again, I, I agree, we should not fall to rumors. We need to, here's the facts. And you can debate it. If you don't like the facts, that's fine. But these are the facts. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to come here and do this. Again, another presentation, and you're welcome every single meeting if that's what we have to do, so people understand that we are working very closely to the Board of Education, and we are also listening to people who have concerns. So you're welcome. This could be a standing meeting for Donald if he chooses to come for the rest of the summer. We're, we're I don't committed. want anyone to, I, we're not, a, we are, I don't want anyone to think that we're afraid of answering these questions, because we are not afraid of it. No. In fact, we are on the front foot, because this is innovative, and it's going to benefit not only the town, but our children. And that's what matters here. So you're welcome, and my, I'll say it publicly, you're welcome to come as a special guest for the rest of the summer until September. I don't think you should threaten him with that for his well, summer vacation. <laughs> well, um, if he, he might be in a good mood in about two weeks, so he should be able to he should be able to, he should be able to come. No, I say t we're going to be meeting right up until the time the program opens successfully in the fall. We meet every Monday on the logistics, the, the, the joint team, and every Friday they meet at Stowe and Head Start for the scholastic portion of it. And I have to tell you, there's enthusiasm, optimism. We, when we started this, I mean, we really couldn't have done it if we started now. This was started almost a year ago when the, when the superintendent had this idea with his people and started to put the wheels in motion. So to that degree, you're right, Mr. Mayor, we are ahead of it and we're working very hard. We'll continue to meet as often as it takes. We meet 
every week twice, but we talk almost every day. And we'll continue to chase these down till we have good um, solutions and that we enhance the program. And I just want to say from the academic experts and people who are in early childhood development and in the school system, it was always a desire and a recommendation of the state to have all of these, these children under the same roof. So that's now what we're going to hopefully accomplish in the fall. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank Donald. You, sir. And good luck. Uh, One last thing. Uh, are you going to make it out of here in time? Are you going to make it out of here in time? Once again, can we keep them for longer? Eight o'clock. <laughs> are you? You got? You got, Sorry, you have one more thing. Or are you all set? No, I'm good. Oh, all right, we're all right, we're going to keep them a little longer. I was holding my breath as to what that could be. <laughs> Sorry, Chris, go ahead. All right, and again, um, another issue which isn't uh, simple uh, is the adult daycare. Uh, and I just want to be clear that, uh, you know, there's been talk about are there additional funds needed, and yes, and that's been uh, identified since 2015. So I don't think people should be saying, oh, my gosh, we have to address it this week. Uh, it doesn't affect the, the, the safety and the running of the program on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's those things that were addressed and reviewed appropriately to say what you would need in the long term. And a lot of them are exterior and HVAC and things such as the generator. So we're looking at that. But what I would like to say is, um, again, we're, we're taking a very new approach to this. We're looking at it with fresh eyes. We have a new director. We're advertising for a new director of the facility because uh, the current director had uh, almost, well, a long period ago said she'd be retiring July 1st, so we'll get a new director on board. Uh, we do need uh, a part-time recreation person, and we're looking. Uh, I've met um, last week, and we're going on a tour this week uh, with um, Jason Neely, Damian Humphrey. We're looking at the suggestion and recommendation of both uh, sides of the uh, council to look at integrating to whatever degree we can to the benefit of both groups adult daycare with the senior center. So I would just like to put all rumors aside. Are we considering moving it there? Are we considering expanding the role? Yes. We've been asked to look at it, and I, I do those things that the council directs and see if it's something that's recommendable or not. So if people start coming forward to you and are concerned that this program will come to the senior center and impact them, well, it's a possibility. Um, we're looking at that for space and for programs and for the betterment of both groups. So that's an affirmative. So we don't need to hear any rumors on Facebook. I'm telling you right here and now that we're going Thursday morning to tour the facility. These facilities are accredited. And in order for us to get reimbursement from the government, we have to stay and keep those accreditations. So anything we do will be done in consultation with the accreditation uh, agency that oversees health care. And we're in, Damien is reaching out to them. But we're trying to bring more innovative programs. I'm not going to showcase them this evening. But we're hoping to make it a very attractive, warm, and wonderful place that uh, people would feel comfortable and excited to bring their seniors to uh, for uh, a day or two or three a week. And there will be some, as we said, there are some uh, obstacles. Won't get into them now. We're trying to focus on the positive. But uh, we will know shortly those things that we can accomplish at zero cost and those things that we need to come and find some uh, financing for. But we're going to give it our best try. We have a lot of good people. I think it's an exciting opportunity. It's such a wonderful cause. It's something you feel good about at the end of the day to be able to provide this service. And people look at it like they have in the past and revere it and talk about it. And that's why I think people have fought to keep it so long because it was such a marvelous program. So we'll do our best to try to reinvent invigorate it and make it the best that we can and we'll keep you posted from week to week but we're working on it any questions moving on to the town attorney report good evening mr. mayor and town council I just wanted to update you since I had mentioned uh, in during our May meetings that we were having FOI training for staff and we've completed that we had two sessions there were about 50 employees total and in, during the second session Tom Hennick who is the public information officer for the Freedom of Information Commission joined me in doing the training and he mentioned that if you would like additional training in the fall he's happy to come back we have had training for boards and commissions typically at night uh, which focuses on the meetings and he suggested possibly in the fall we could do something joint again so I thought that that was very positive and it was good to have probably as I said about 50 employees all totaled and that's all I have any questions for the town attorney Maria I just have one question and this is on the Maple Road on the border of Enfield and Longmeadow Can we I, I know Deb's been working on it with, with Donald I'd like a legal opinion on who should be taking care of that road. I know we try to be a good neighbor. We've reached out. 
Is and this something that's come up before? Because yeah, it's, it's not ringing a bell for it, me. It, I don't know. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I want us a legal opinion because, again, here it is. We talked about this three months ago, and, I, and my understanding, they were already supposed to fix it or at least make the road passable. And it is, it's in Longmeadow. And they're, they're, I know they're saying that it's our, we have some agreement where we said we would do it. I think we need to, let's get it. And if it's, we, we never have that agreement. I understand the individual is probably a former Enfield employee who's probably saying this, but uh, that, well, that's here or there. But I want to have a legal opinion because, again, it's dragging on. At some point, I think we need to have a conversation with the town of Longmeadow. I'll get some additional facts from the manager's office. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's dragging on much too long, and I apologize. Thank you. Any other questions for the town attorney? Moving on to item 12, old business. A1 and 2 on page 1, we have none. Oh, sorry. Oop. Number 11, uh, uh, report of special committees of the council. Councilor Muller. I have a special update for JFK Building Committee. The RFQ for the construction manager at risk is out. Uh, the closing date is Wednesday, June 12th. There's some other important dates. There's a mandatory walkthrough Thursday, June 20th. The interview and selection committee will meet Saturday, July 13th, and we'll select the construction manager at risk on Wednesday, July 17th. Thank you. Councilor Angar. Oh, okay. There was a collaboration with the Enfield Rotary Club and Enfield High School. Uh, students constructed and designed over a dozen buddy benches. And for those of you that don't know what a buddy bench is, they're placed in parks um, at the public and parochial schools of elementary age kids. And when a student during recess and they don't have a friend to play with, they know they can go sit on this buddy bench and the kids know to go and invite them to come and play. So it's a, it's a great collaboration, and it was grant money that allowed them to build all these. So the students did a great job. You'll see them around. I hope everybody gets to take a look at them. Also, the Rotary Club of Enfield honored six special students with a special luncheon at Enfield High. They were each given $50 gift cards, and they had little intros about what they're doing. And the, the, we have some wonderful students over there. So it was nice to honor them with that. Also, first readers had their award ceremony, and that was today, and it was the largest group that I've ever seen. So congratulations to all those first readers. Also, Enfield High School is going to have their kindness carnival on June 6th from 4.30 to 7.30. Anyone else? Moving on to item 12, old business. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, sorry. Could I just add in, yeah. uh, I had something to, uh, of note to mention. I don't want to forget. We'll put out a, pr a press release, but um, because Jessica's here and members of the public, our next meeting on the 17th, well, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to be having special guests between 6 and 7. Uh, the special agent in charge of the Connecticut FBI, uh, a representative, perhaps the U.S. Attorney um, John Durham, uh, our local state's attorney on the state side, and uh, representatives from our police department. And it's just going to be a presentation on what the Federal Bureau of Investigation, what our state and what our local people are doing together. Um, to cohesively enforce the law. It's, you know, you talk about, and it's a small and local level, the cooperation between the Board of Ed and the Council, and it makes a big difference. And that cooperation on the state and local and federal level today in Connecticut with the FBI and the U.S. Attorney, local police and, and state's attorney is, again, at an unprecedented level of, of quality. So they're going to come in and discuss that. I think it'll be a wonderful opportunity to hear it. I think we're very lucky to have them taking time out of their busy schedules to come to Enfield, and we'll put out a press release. But that will be uh, the next meeting, June 21st, between 6 and 7 here in the Council Chambers. I think it'll be fascinating. So uh, so it's a special, I guess this is a special committee, but the, the June, someone asked about the June 12th. Um, oh, public hearing. Yes, so I think it Mr. is on Young our did. website. The picture was actually put on the patch. Yeah, and I think it's very important for everyone who can make the meeting to go. And I believe I don't think you have to submit a question before. I think you. Can well, th we put up. The, it's their show, and yeah. to Mr. Young's yeah. uh, question, this is of their doing. Uh, they're the ones right. moving forward on it. It's their road. This is nothing that the town recommended or. Uh, asked for so it's important to come out and be heard because it is a significant change to that area and they did say we put up their direct their rules for public hearing they say they're gonna have a conversation but they encourage questions to be submitted in writing first so if anybody has any of those on the council
now, so I encourage you to get them uh, to them. It's listed on the website. I would hope when they say there's going to be a conversation that evening that they'll be willing to have a back and forth and uh, answer people's concerns, but I can't uh, say that for certain because it's, it's a state public hearing and, and they play by their own rules. So, so just for the record, Councilor Denny and Councilor Bosco came before the Public Safety Subcommittee and we recommended and made sure that we, we A, we wanted to make sure there's a public hearing and that we, then you posted the, the, that diagram that's out on, I think, on the patch on our website. Yes. And I think if anyone's ever driven on roads to have those, I don't want to use the word, I hate to use this term, it's called. it's called suicide lanes. Those things are, those are tough. I mean, it's tough to navigate and I think it's important for people to be there on the 12th. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Just one. Is, is it televised? We're going to. We thought it was important okay. enough that we had funding left for uh, our ETV, and they're going to film it. All right. Good. Because I requested them to, and no. gosh, well, we've asked them to, and I, right, I believe they're you. going to. I did have a few people inquire about yeah. that. Thank you. Anything else to report to the special committee? Okay. Moving on to item 12, old business. Items A, 1, and 2 on page 1. There are none. Top of page 2, items 3 through 15. There are none. Top of page three, 16 through 18. Again, there are none, no appointments. Item B, appointments by the town manager, one through 11 on page three. There are none. Top of page four, items 12, 13, and 14. There are none. There are on item C, under old business, planning and zoning commission appointed, council approve. Again, none. Item D, nutmeg solar stays on the table. Is there anything left to discuss? I mean, it's something, I mean, should we remove it and take it off the, the agenda? I mean, it's all over but the building, so. Right, pretty much. I mean, the appeal uh, period goes until June 10th, but I, I don't was, think there's anything meaningful. I was, so anyone have an issue to remove the item D from old business? To remove from the agenda? We have a motion. Motion. By Councillor Denny, Second. seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. So this is simply to, uh, all those in favor of Take moving from the down. table? Nine in favor, zero against. And this simply is just to remove from the agenda since we know the deal is pretty much done and I don't, other than when they, to start construction. If there are any issues that uh, that uh, surface, we'll bring it back. Okay. Any other questions are on this item? Do we need a roll call or, or show of hands? Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to remove from the agenda? So moved. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any discussion on the motion? Is show of hands okay? okay. By a show of hands, all those in favor for move from the table? Opposed? We have nine in favor, zero against. It's removed from the agenda. Item E, school roofs, I guess, same question. Do we re really need to keep this on the agenda? <sighs> Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'd like to leave it on the agenda just in case we have an issue that comes up at a different school. Right now we're looking at the Eli Whitney and the Hazard Memorial, okay. but things change and I think that we need to have some place. And okay, fair enough. Everyone okay with that? We'll leave it on the table. Moving to item 13, new business. There is the A, item A, no consent agenda. Again, no appointments, item B, from the town council. Item C, no town manager, council approved. And D, no P and Z, commissioner appointed, council approved. Item 14, items for discussion. Item A, there are no consent agenda. Items B, um, B, one, two, three, excuse me, one, two, right? Um, I bet items B, one stays on the table. Yeah. Items two, three, and four have been moved to miscellaneous. Item five stays on the table. Item C, appointments by the town manager, there are none. Items, oops, sorry, let me get, is that item C, one and two? Again, stay on the table. Item D, there's no P and Z commission appointed, council approved. Items E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, all move, move the miscellaneous. Okay, pretty good. Item 15, now we move to miscellaneous. Okay, sorry, let me get, just when we bump to that, where are we? So under item B, B2, appointment for the Inland Wetlands Water Course Agency. It's a reappointment for um, Donna Corbin Sobinski. Do I have a motion to a uh, nomination? Excuse me. I have By Councilor Crisati. Second. So you have, I mean, you, so the Second motion is to reappoint. To motion to, to, motion to reappoint. Right by Councilor Crisati, seconded by Councilor Denny. Do I have a motion to close, close nomination by Deputy Mayor Suzak? Second. Seconded by Councilor Muller. All those in uh, favor of closing nomination by show of hands? Nine in favor, zero against. Roll call, please. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor, uh, let's see, Crisati? Four. Councilor Denny? 
Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sfraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Donna Corbin Savinsky. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. It's unanimous. Moving on to item B. B3, again, a reappointment for the Inland and the Wetlands of Carrie Ann Wagner Ho. How, excuse me, do we have a nomination to reappoint? Nominate uh, for reappointment uh, Carrie Ann Wagner Howe. By Councilor Denny, Second. seconded by Councilor Crisati. Is there a motion to close nominations? So by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Sferraza. All those in favor of closing nominations by show of hands. We have nine in favor, zero against. Any questions on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sfraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Carrie Ann Wagner Howe? And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. It's unanimous. Moving on to item B4. Another reappointment for the Inland Wetlands Watercourse Agency for the term of Marcy Talisio. Is there a nomination to reappoint? By, De by Councillor Cassati, seconded by Councillor Kiner. Is there a motion to close nominations? By Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. Seconded by Councillor Muller. All those in favor of closing nomination by a show of hands. Nine in favor, zero against. Is there any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Cassati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Marcy Talisio? And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Unanimous. Nine, okay, we move on to item E under miscellaneous. Again, discussion resolution dedicating the Annex Wrestling Center. Whereas, and again, I apologize in advance if I ruin his name, Ben Alex, if I say that correctly? Alex. Alex, sorry, devoted 11 years as head coach of the Rico Fermi wrestling team, helped to shape the lives of many Enfield youth. And whereas Ben compiled a town record of 70.5 winning percentage and guided the Fermi Falcons to a state open runner-up finish in 1987 while producing an All-American along the way. Whereas Ben also induct, was inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame in 2016, and whereas Ben Alex has continued to promote to provide support as a volunteer coach for the past 25 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby dedicate the NX Wrestling Room as Ben Alex Wrestling Center. By Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Crisati. Any to Councilor Ferraza. Um, I certainly support this, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make sure, as we had discussed, did the town receive a letter from the governing board of the Athletic Hall of Fame per our policy? Did we receive that letter or email? I believe we, we did receive the letter from the Hall of Fame. Okay. okay. Right. Great question. That was just to make sure we follow our own policy. Correct. Great question. Yeah, I, I made sure of that. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Spraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Nine in favor, none against. Moving on under miscellaneous to item F, a resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a grant and enter an agreement with Amplify Inc. Whereas Amplify Inc. provides funding to the Youth Services Division, and whereas Youth Services in a process of, is in the process of submitting a grant application to Amplify Inc. for funds that will be available for in a, to the town in the fiscal year 2019-2020. Now, there in the fiscal year 2019 to 2020. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager Christopher W. Bronson is authorized to sign and submit the grant application with Amplify Inc. And be it further resolved that the town manager Christopher W. Bronson is authorized to sign an agreement subject to review and approval of the town attorney in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with Amplify Inc. submitted on May 23rd, 2019 by Damian Humphrey, the Acting Director of Social Services. So by Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Crisati. I don't know if any, just. No, uh, the Acting Director is here. If there are any questions, it's a two-year two grant, and it's for the well, areas Just a brief overview so people understand why we're for applying for the grant, Damian, you don't mind? Sure. Two seconds? I mean, I, I, like, when you sit in the audience, I'd like to make sure you get a chance to speak on behalf <laughs> of the program. Good evening. My name is Damian Humphrey, Acting Director of Social Services for the Town of Enfield. And uh, this grant is to provide uh, staff with <clears throat> the ability to inform the public um, on uh, safe uh, practices surrounding uh, the negative effects of substance abuse. So it's a grant that we've applied to before. Uh, there's no cost to the municipality. 
and uh, it helps us to inform our youth and our community on the dangers of substance abuse. Okay. Any questions for Damien? Thank you, sir. I want to make sure as you, you know, you're sitting that you at least got a chance to explain. Thank you. He'll stay because he has the next. All right, so you can yeah. you can sit and uh, right. any, so no further here, no further comments. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Chairman Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Spraza. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. And Councillor Ungar. Four. Nine in favor, none against. Moving on to item G under miscellaneous, a resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a two-year grant and enter an agreement with Connecticut Department of Education. Whereas the, Depart the Connecticut State Department of Education provides funding to the Youth Service Division, and whereas the Youth Services is in the process of submitting a grant application to the Connecticut State Department of Education for funds that will be available in the, to the town in fiscal year 2019-2020 and fiscal year 2020-2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign and submit the grant application with the Connecticut State Department of Education, and be it further resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to enter an agreement subject to review and approval of the town attorney in an aim and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the Connecticut State Department of Education, submitted on May 23, 2019, by Damian Humphrey, Acting Director of Social Services. So moved. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Crisati. Sir. Yeah, so again, this is a similar grant that uh, the Youth Services Department has continuously received because of the great work that they do with our community partners uh, and uh, the stakeholders in the Board of Education to work with our youth, uh, their families, uh, all involved to be able to uh, build capacity to really educate uh, the community on the dangers of substance abuse. Uh, and again, this grant, uh, there's no uh, out-of-state travel required for the grant. Uh, it's basically cost-neutral, and uh, it does amazing work in really building the capacity within the community to reduce the uh, dangers of substance abuse. Well, I appreciate the comment on no out-of-state travel. I appreciate that. And then second, just curious, is this delivered through the schools? Through the, how is it delivered? It's delivered uh, in partnership with our youth and family services and members of the uh, Board of Education and other community partners like the Enfield Together Coalition. Is it more of a proactive type approach or are we sort of when we find out maybe a child has experimented? It's very hands-on. There's a lot of uh, uh, information that's given by the youth services department and the staff to the the community and then as uh issues and needs arise uh, the staff is ready to be able to to meet those needs with our community partners of course okay any questions from anyone thank you sir appreciate it you're welcome roll call please councillor bosco Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Chairman Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Spraza. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. And Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Nine in favor and none against. Moving on to item H under miscellaneous. Resolution amending the solid waste highway division refuge collector job description. Resolved in accordance of chapter seven, section two of the town charter. The Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the job description for Solid Waste Highway Division Refuge Collector, submitted on May 24, 2019, by Steve Belinda, the Human Resource Director. So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. I know this is just a continuation of some of the reorg that we've been doing, Chris. Do we, we already posted for the job, correct? Uh, that's the next one. Okay. This is this one is not. This is going to change and actually increase the responsibilities of the position. All right, got it. Any questions? Councillor Kiner. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, the, the town manager, or maybe Don. Uh, this position of refuse collector uh, is a position that's subject to our collective bargaining laws, I, I presume. Yes. Mr. Belinda is here as well to answer that. Councillor, it's a, it's a pre existing condition, um, condition, position. <laughs> um, <laughs> In, in our, our in, you're looking ahead to watching the game. That's yeah, what the pre-edition condition is. I'm gonna have a pre. They're already down one nothing as it is. So, um, it is a pre-existing position that's here now. What we're trying to do is create more flexibility, because uh, right now, the, when that person is working on, um, our, when that when that person's on our, they can only be on RRM right now. 
So what we're asking to do is have RRM and highway division. So when they're not on the back of a truck on a Tuesday, we have to kind of find work for them to laboring work to do. Now we can move them right to highway and have them go do other things that we need them to do. So this is purely a flexible thing, and Steve will answer more towards the bargaining this unit. This was negotiated with the union, so they have endorsed it. Well, that was my question, basically, Steve. I'm sorry. Uh, that was my question, basically, to, to find out how the process works and see if the union uh, just signed off on it. And you just answered that, and that's, I'm fine with that. Thank you. You know, just we, they couldn't present this bill if we act, they actually didn't have the conversation with the union beforehand. So they wouldn't even got to us if the union didn't right. sign off on it, just so you know. So it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even have came before us if the union didn't agree to this. they got to understand the new guy on no, the no, council. No, no, just <laughs> edification. And also just since, again, for the new folks, we actually, Absolutely. over the last year and a half, across the entire town government, we've done this, where we've given flexibility for the departments to have, some, again, to have if someone maybe in a seasonal job can do something else. We've done this across every department, I think, in the town side. This is just a continuation of all the reorganization we've done across every single department that the town has. So I just, again, this has been a consistent, you know, um, approach. You know, Steve, I don't want to speak for you, but really this has been over the last year and a half we've done this. Okay, yeah, that, that's the continuing theme. We have to wear many hats nowadays, right. and we we don't want to get into the well. That's not my job description because when it's all said and done, it's in. A Again, lot of job in, in accordance yeah. with people wanting us to spend their tax dollars as efficiently as we possibly can, getting the most bang for the buck. Councilor Sferraza. Um Steve, the union signed off on it. Yes. Um, they didn't have to sign off on no. it. No. And they didn't ask for more money. No, they did not. So you know what? When our employees step up to do something like this to help us out whether it's taking zero increase raises or agreeing more duties without more compensation, they need to be recognized and thanked. And I certainly appreciate their efforts. And I will echo that to the union Thank membership. You. Well said, sir. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Spraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungar? Four. Nine in favor, none against? Moving under Ira Demai, I know you gentlemen will stay there. Under miscellaneous resolution adopting the Deputy Director Operations Job Description, resolved in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the job description for Deputy Director of Operations, submitted on May 24, 2019, by Steve Belinda, the Human Resource Director. So moved. By Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Crisati. I think this is, this is sort of the, right the Novak report. So if you guys would like to comment, I think it's important for people to understand. Go ahead. Um, I started drafting this job description, taking um, a piece of information right out of the Novak study, and then I worked closely with uh, Donald as he started gathering other uh, similar type uh, job descriptions from other facilities and, and employers, and we, together we uh, pieced together this job description. I think that hits exactly what uh, we're all looking for here, and it's out there now, and we're starting to get applications for it, and we're scrutinizing the resumes. I wish, Mr. Mayor, that Jack Sheridan was here because I think in the past one of his uh, regrets is, or his concerns was the council didn't listen to the consultants we hired to make recommendations to us. And I think we've done an incredible job of implementing the NOVAC report. Uh, it was money well spent. We've implemented many of the recommendations. This is one of the key ones. And again, just so everyone knows, with the commitment and the dollars we're spending for the high school, for the JFK, for the water pollution control, it is essential that we have a person of this caliber and experience who has oversight over our physical plant community of all of our buildings so that we make sure that they're being maintained, repaired, and that we have a schedule to do so so that we don't make these investments and then in a couple years uh, we're, we're spending money on damages because we didn't look after uh, the care and maintenance of our machines and, and the, the infrastructure. So that's the type of person we're looking to do this throughout the town and it will dovetail very nicely with what facilities is doing with their consultant to look at all the town buildings to see what we're keeping, to see what we're jettisoning, and then to really concentrate on maintaining those buildings. And it's part of doing roads and roofs and boilers and chillers, but you don't want to make this uh, investment of tens of millions of dollars on infrastructure and then see it go to waste because we don't have somebody in place to oversee a program to watch it and, and do the proper maintenance and repair of it. So that's, that's what this is about. 
And I don't know if you gentlemen have any other comments. I can't possibly improve we, on we that. Can, we, so. can fill, <laughs> we can filibuster for like another half hour. Like, <laughs> there's no rule against it in the town. But I, I think in seriousness, though, the, the staff took the Novak report seriously. I know we, I think, talked about that last summer, I believe. I yep. also want to recognize, and again, I, I have to admit, I do, I'm not a sensitive individual, but Councillor Denny, Deputy Mayor Suzak, and Councillor Bosco spent, along with your staff, I think, what, the last three meetings? I mean, these are subcommittee meetings where you spent, I think, Hours. multiple hours not just 15 20 minutes going over this report making these recommendations that are, again are hopefully not only make us more efficient but uh, to some of the comments we had about actually maintaining our infrastructure and actually having a plan to implement that infrastructure so we're not 20 years down the road saying how come we haven't done this for the last 20 years so I think people got to recognize there's a lot of work that does go in it's not here in front of the council meeting that you folks have spent with your staff you know and really implementing these plans and these changes that are going to move the town forward and address a lot of the issues that we keep hearing that we haven't addressed over the last maybe 25 years. And also, I think this is important to tie in the earlier discussion on the water pollution control, the enhancement and upgrades, and the cost and why we're putting money aside. The NOVAC report recommended an additional five to six people to be hired in the water pollution control at a cost of five to six hundred thousand dollars a year. We delayed it in order that we bring on the new superintendent and he can make an assessment with the director of public works. But that is a cost that is coming and it's money we have to spend. I remember when we did a few months back, um, we had the uh, presentation on the sewer use fee and we had a gentleman who's a town resident who works in a neighboring community that just upgraded their plant and he lamented that they didn't put the money and resources and staff to properly uh, run it or maintain it, and already he's seeing the cost increases and repairs because of that short-sightedness. So again, we will hope to look at the Novak report and implement it uh, when we're ready after the new superintendent can assess and make his recommendation for next year. But again, those monies are going to be needed, and that's a half a million dollars a year. Any questions or comments from anyone? Gentlemen, anything else? Nope. Roll call, please. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sprazza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Nine in favor, none against. Moving on to item J under miscellaneous. Resolution authorizing a town manager, manager or his designee to sign a contract with Operation Fu Fuel. Whereas Operation Fuel Inc. provides energy assistance services to town residents in need, and whereas Enfield Social Services partners with Operation Fuel Inc. by processing fuel assistance applications, and whereas Operation Fuel Inc. will reimburse Enfield Social Services at a rate of $25 per application for processing services, resolve that the town manager or designee is authorized to sign a contract subject to review and approval by the town attorney in the name on behalf of the town of Enfield with Operation Fuel Inc. and to affix the corporate seal. Submitted ahead of the game on June 17, 2019, by Damian Humphrey, acting director of social services. So by Councilor Muller, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. So you want, I think it's important to let if yep, you want, Damian's Damian, please, department some oversees on this. this. is an important program. It's been a long-standing yeah. and successful program. I think it's important that people understand. Good evening again. Damian Humphrey, acting director of social services for the town of Enfield. Uh, this is an incredible program in partnership with Operation Fuel. Uh, this year so far, we have helped 80 households. Uh, this is work that our department uh, would be doing anyways, and we've been able to raise close to $2,000. Uh, and this money is paid to us by Operation Fuel for helping town residents who need assistance with heating and cooling uh, during the summer months and winter months. So um, this is revenue that the town has been able to generate. Uh, we're continuing to, you know, provide excellent service to our community members that come to our offices at 110 High Street. Uh, and we work in partnership to be able, with Operation Fuel, to really quickly provide these services to community members when they need it. Any questions for Damien? Councilor Just real quick, um, Operation Fuel, where do they get their funding? Is it state money they get? Uh, they get their funding uh, in part from the state, uh, from energy providers like Eversource and 
us, if you look at your energy bill, okay, uh, they ask you if you would like to donate a dollar, right? And uh, that's, where, and it that's comes where it comes from. from a portion of it. This is separate from the L the uh, circuit breaker program, correct? Correct. All right. So this is in addition to the circuit breaker program that we provide, which approximately. Again, other assistance when it comes to fuel or heat or that sort of thing for approximately 600 families. So, if someone could someone apply for that grant credit and this as well? Uh, well, this is income based. So uh, during the so meaning yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I, I guess they they could, uh, but again, operation fuel depending on the income and the needs. Uh, so, so so my question. So this is again. I apologize. I don't want to digress. How do we find more? I know there's more people in 80 that need help with air conditioning and or heat. How do we, and I, I can just say, I can go drive down a couple streets off the top of my head who probably don't even know that. How do we reach those people within the grant opera, you know, money? So we're helping those question. folks. You know, again, as we talk about some of the, the services we're trying to fit under our budget, again, the people who are in their homes, how do we find those people and help them? Because I don't, I don't, I think that's an underserviced group of people in our town. One of the things that we're discussing is uh, better communication and, and coming up with an outreach uh, marketing plan within the department for fiscal year 2020. And I think that uh, by us going out to uh, the community and uh, through special events, being able to have flyers and, and different opportunities to, to share what we have. So we're already thinking within our department of different ideas to do outreach instead of waiting for people to come to us. So is it it's income based? Is it age based? It is not. Do, do we reach out through the schools? Uh, that I know of, no. What's the max in theory this grant? So are you saying we have around 80? Can we have 800? Uh, actually, that I don't know because I do believe that, I mean, the funds are limited uh, through Operation Fuel. So I don't know what the cap is for our municipality. But I know that uh, no one is ever rejected for applying through Operation Fuel. So I, pre I mean, my own, again, these are things that we have to figure out a way of reaching people. Mm -hmm. So I, You're I, right. any ideas you folks come up with, um, we're all for. And we're I open to an, hearing your ideas as well. I don't well. know if anyone counsels for us. I'll stop talking. I mean, it seems logical. You must work with the Commission of Aging in town. We do. Right. So they would probably have some good uh, in the triad program over at the Senior Center. Yep. Okay, great. So uh, this came out, I apologize, are you, are you all set? What about, so we set up a blight committee. What about, so I, I am not trying to make the leap, but what if, again, through that blight committee, someone has been fined for whatever reason? Is that another avenue we can look into where maybe, again, if someone maybe not be mowing their lawn as well as they should, maybe there's an issue where they can't, they just simply can't take care of the house. So maybe they are, you know, that, that's another avenue to think through. Sure. I mean, again, if there are ways that we can re, uh, receive these referrals, um, we can certainly have our social worker uh, meet with them. But I think usually, you know, the 80 usually know that the service is there right. and they come to us. But I think we have to I agree. I think do a better job to, of and I, outreach. I, think so. I don't know if it's as simple as maybe we put it on your front, the website, and a school website. Well, as well. that's in part. I think not everyone has access to Good uh, point. internet, right. not everyone has a computer or a phone. So uh, we're trying to figure out ways to identify. Uh, times and staff that can can do outreach, and that's something that I love to do as well. So, so that put it in a spot. What about? I mean, we, we hear public service announcements of you know, if you see something, say something. Simple as that. Yep. And I mean, we do. We must know a neighbor. Everyone must know a neighbor who probably could use the help. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying maybe something as simple as that. If you know a neighbor, give them the number and call. I don't know if that you know you provided on for us to have as a number. I mean, I don't even. It is on our website, All right? Uh, and if you could send them, maybe after mean send the council the information of where we they could go get that program. The, sure. Or if it's a who's the contact in town, and so then we know who it is. Okay. If we see something, hey, here's a number you want to call. I mean, I certainly would be an advocate for it. Sure, I can yeah. provide that to the council. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's okay. Good answer, though. Any other questions, Council Grisati? I have a, an idea. I know that the uh, Commission on Aging is going to be sending out a, a booklet. Yep, the and, blue book. You know, the, the blue book. And I think that would be a perfect spot to be able to put something in to get that information out, which would be part of your outreach program. 
great. And I think that's great. But I think you know the late the lady who was here earlier, Mrs. Crisatelli, again could maybe. I mean, so it's not just seniors that need the help. And it sounds like it's not an age-based program. It's not. We so, get right families, individuals. Right. Yeah, so that's why I think we have to figure out. It's not just an age-based program. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank Roll you. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? <coughs> Nine in favor, none against? Moving on to item K under miscellaneous. Resolution authorizing creation of the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financing District and adopt, adopting the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment fi Financing District Master Plan for the district. Whereas Connecticut General Statute 7-339CC-7-339 KK inclusive authorized municipalities in Connecticut to create tax incentive financings, also known as TIF districts, for the purpose of incentiv incentivizing economic development and infrastructure and supporting employment, housing, economic growth, and other <coughs> projects. Whereas the proposed district to be known as the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financing District, also known as the district, will be created pursuant to the act and the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financing District Master Plan, attached hereinto as Exhibit A, the di again, also known as the District Master Plan, which details the creation, structure, development, financing, operation, and maintenance of the district, and whereas pursuant to the District Master Plan, the Town of Enfield, also known as the Town, will capture 50% of the future increased assessed property values within the, the district for an anticipated term of 20 years and utilize up to 100% of the real property tax revenues generated from such increased property values, along with private funds to fund infrastructure improvements, economic development programs, traffic and road improvements, streetscaping, branding, and administrative costs. And whereas the town is in need of economic development and infrastructure improvements in the Midtown Enfield area, and whereas there is a need to provide continuing employment opportunities for the citizens of Enfield and the surrounding region, to improve the broader, to, to improve and broaden the tax base in the town, and to improve the economy of the town and the state of Connecticut. Whereas a portion of the real property within a district, in the proposed district, is one in a substandard, unsanitary, de deteriorated, deteriorating or blighted area, two, in need of rehabilitation, redevelopment, or conservation work, three, suitable for industrial, commercial, residential, mixed use, or rental uses downtown development or transit oriented development and whereas as shown in exhibit b of the district master plan the original assessed value of the taxable property within the district does not exceed 10 percent of the total value of taxable property within the town as of october 1 2018 and whereas the creation of the district will help to provide continued employment for the citizens of the town the surrounding region to improve and broaden the tax base in the town and to contribute to the economic growth and well-being of the town and the state of connecticut what is two pager? Whereas the establishment of the district would not be in conflict, I didn't realize that in the town charter. And whereas the established district would not be in conflict with the town charter, and whereas the district master plan was transmitted to, and a study of the district master plan and a written advisory opinion was required by the act as requested from the town planning and zoning commission at least 90 days prior to the author authorization in the establishment of the district. Whereas the town councils had a public hearing on the proposal to establish the district in accordance with the requirements of the act with at least 10 days prior notice published in the newspaper of general circulation within the town, whereas the town councils considered the comments provided at the public hearing both for and against the district. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council hereby authorizes the creation of the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financing District, the boundaries of which are included in the district master plan. Be it further resolved, the Enfield Town Council adopts the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Fund Financing District Master Plan attached here to as Exhibit A, and not be it further resolved, the Enfield Town Council hereby authorizes that 50% of the future in increased assessed property values within a district shall be retained as captured assessed value in accordance with the district master plan and up to 100% of the real property tax revenues generated for such cap captured assessed value may be for such cap captured assessed value may be used to fund the various costs and improvements set forth in the district master plan submitted by Lori Witten director of development services on May 28 2019 <sighs> by councilor Muller by councilor second by councilor Denny I'm ready to retire <laughs> folks have the floor um, I think I said it all so I'm not sure what's left <laughs> yeah there's not much more to add there um, just uh, as a quick brief 
Uh, the way this works is for the general public is uh, right now, let's say a, 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 a parcel has the assessed value of $100, okay, and it gets taxed on that. So that gets basically frozen, and as there's some capital improvement on that, there's increased assessed value, and half of that would go back to the, the um, general fund, and then the other half would go back to the master plan TIF area. So it's just, that's the real basics of it. Any so, questions? Uh, I mean, I know it's been, I think, a couple months. This was sent to the PNZ in March. Mm -hmm. So any questions? Councillor Kiner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I plan on supporting this resolution, uh, but just, just a comment. Um, I think it's fair to say that there might very well be some blighted areas uh, within the TIF district uh, that the government would, go, would allow for condemnation through eminent domain. Um, which is, to us is a very sensitive subject, obviously. Um, my concern is that if we look at Kilo in uh, New London, mm -hmm. uh, th that was in a TIF district. Yep. And I'm just wondering, is there anything within, you know, I understand the general idea of, of TIF. I don't know all the intricacies of, of it, though. Uh, is there anything within a, a, a TIF a district that would allow for easier uh, condemnation and taking hmm. homes by eminent domain, or is Kilo just a um, uh, just an oddball type of thing that just yeah. just happened, just just a coincidence? I'll answer that. We have no intention of invoking eminent domain to uh, utilize our uh, TIF. Uh, as you said, that's a one-off. Kilo is a unique circumstance. We want developers to come in and to want to uh, invest and enhance the district, and we'll use the proceeds in the proportion that um, the director said. But we have no, there's never been a discussion or even a mention of condemnation in connection with our implementation of the TIF, and it's something that I think would be extraordinarily remote if not something we would never do. It's never been discussed. It's not part of our plan or our policy. The, the, the funds will be used through um, the, the use of the advisory council. So there's going to be a TIF advisory board, rather, and then they advise the town council as to how to recommend. I, I, I think that's really spending. what I wanted to hear. Yeah. And just Kilo was an anomaly that had happened in, in a TIF district. Thank you. Yes. All set? Councilor Bosco. Bill, no matter what, you'd have to vote for it. So well, if it, they're going to condemn something or, or take it in a domain, we would have to, we would right. have to say yes or no, just like we did the other night. So we're the protection not, uh, for the people in the town. Um, you know, from what I understand, this has been a goal since 2003. And, um, you know, it's just sometimes, you know, even with like the, uh, the daycare, you, you have to do things and th some things may have the little dips and then you're going to have the ups. But eventually, if you don't try something, you'll never get nowhere. And uh, all the poking at this, and I mean, it's been on the agenda since I got on in 2007, and it's finally coming. So hopefully it works. If it don't, we'll know soon enough. But, you know, I mean, I, I think it, you know, it looks promising. So mm -hmm. I don't see where it's going to hurt either. Thank you. What's that? Councilor Crisati. Yeah, I, I think over the last year or so, maybe more or less couple of years anyway, with the, uh, the all the hard work that your committee and, and you in particular and Nelson have done on this and, uh, you know, it's been through planning and zoning and developmental services and, and, and everybody's been looking at this for quite some time. This is a good piece of work. And uh, I think, you know, as, as a town, we should be very proud of uh, of this accomplishment that we passed here tonight. Very promising. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, Nelson Teresa, Deputy Director of Economic and Community Development. I also like to acknowledge our Economic Development Commission. They did a great job in uh, reviewing the policy and the uh, uh, this master plan. So I'd like to acknowledge them tonight as well. You know, and I think we sat here a year ago, right? A year ago, and we were at the time two years away. I remember the conversation. Two years away. So the credit goes to your staff 
Again, you heard the debate on the council. We wanted to move forward with this. We didn't want to wait two years down the road. We were able to use the money to get a consultant to help us get us there with our staff, with the Economic Development Commission, with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Again, multiple different levels of government involved to make something happen where we hope, to Councillor Bosco's point, that this, again, generates something that we maybe weren't going to be able to generate prior to having this. And I think, again, we did it within less than a year. So I wish we could move quicker sometimes, but at multiple different levels of government commented on this and volunteer levels of government commented on this. So it wasn't just elected officials. So I think that's the other thing that people, this is really an accelerated from really, I think of July of last year to where we are now. So I think kudos to your folks, to your IT Economic Development, Development Commission, the Planning and Zoning Commission, your staff, and of course the consultant that we hired who helped us go on. And of course for the town council for pushing the policy. So thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions? Thank you, folks. Roll call, please. Councilman Bosco? Four. Councilman Crisati? Four. Councilman Denny? Four. Councilman Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councilman Muller? Four. Councilman Spraza? Four. Councilman Suzak? Four. And Councilman Ungeyer? Four. We have nine in favor, none against. Moving on to item L under miscellaneous, adopting the Town of Enfield Tax Increment Financing Policy. Be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the Town of Enfield Tax Increment Financing Policy dated June 2019, submitted on May 30th, 2019 by Lori Witten, Director of Development Services. So moved. By Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Crisati. I don't know other than as I said, anyone has any other comments that they didn't get prior? I think we're good. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Casati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Nine in favor, none against? Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Well done. Moving on to item N, under, excuse me, item M under miscellaneous. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the amendment to, amendment to agreement with the Hazville Institute Conserv con cons Conservancy Society, Inc., and I apologize for ruining Conservancy. Whereas the Hasville Institute Conservancy Society, Inc., and the Town of Enfield fully executed an agreement on May 2nd, 2017, regarding the town's 300,000 appropriation funds for the Hasville Institute Rehabilitation Project. Whereas paragraph 8, subparagraph A of the agreement provided the that the Conservancy shall complete all work and set, set, as set forth in the plan no later than two years after the execution of this agreement. And whereas paragraph eight, subparagraph D of the agreement provides that in the event of unforeseen events resulting in the delay of the project, the parties hereto may be by written amendment to this agreement extend the time for completion of the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield County Council authorized the town manager to sign the amendment to the agreement with the Hazville Institute Conservancy, Conservancy Society, Inc., subject to review and approval of the town attorney, submitted by Nelson Teriso, Deputy, Deputy Director of Economic Community Development, on May 9, 2019. So by Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. <coughs> Sir. Good evening. Uh, when I first got on board here in town, uh, Chris asked me to reach out to the uh, Conservancy folks. And uh, I had to set up a meeting with them. Um, most of them are here in attendance tonight, Rich, Gretchen, and Bill, uh, regarding this uh, project. And um, when I first met with them, uh, this, this building is in the heart of Hazardville. It's in the uh, it's a National Register District. It's a contributing resource. So I spoke to them about uh, state, state uh, programs to assist in the final phase of their project. So I told them to hold off on the final phase of work to pursue uh, state financial assistance. So we had the State Historic Preservation Office meet with us, and we're discussing potential programs to assist them with the uh, final phase, which consists of electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and finishing work. They completed the addition, which they needed to do as part of ADA accessibility, bathrooms, uh, Lula lift elevator. So things are moving forward. They just need some more time now to pursue uh, some additional funding in order to leverage the money that we've been, that we provided them to finish this project. So the purpose of uh, this resolution is to get an extension on that, on the uh, agreement. Okay. Any questions or comments? Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'm going to vote in favor of it. I, you know, as far as I, I, family members of mine have been involved for at least a decade on this, and there's been people who have been involved 40 years, and I know this is a really close knit um, 
uh, conservancy of their members. And I, I can't tell you the sorrow that this, these people have when a member that's been working on this for 30 or 40 years passes. And the, our last one to have passed was Tony Secundo, and he was actually the person who signed the lease for the conservancy. So it's, it's just a matter of it would be really nice to see a historic building open back up while some of the members that have worked for a long time can see this. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Councillor Crisati. The, uh, it says $142,000 is going to be needed to finalize the final phase of this. 142000 is what's left in the, uh, in, in the grant, the town, town funding. Out of the 300, uh, 158,000 have been spent to date on the on the uh, restoration or the addition to the building. So this this all of this money is going to be used for the. The remaining 142,000 is going to be used towards the final phase, which is the interior uh, utility work that needs to be done, the electrical, the plumbing, uh, and the uh, you know the utility work and the actual f the finishes in the building itself within the building. So no other money is going to be needed? Well, that's what we're looking into in obtaining state historic grant funding to match the town money, because there is a shortfall to finish this. So we need additional subsidy from the state. And there's, since this is in a, it's a national, it's in the National Register of Historic Places, it's a contributing resource, it's eligible for this money. So there's money readily available. Have we applied for that money yet? We have met with the state. We've provided them with the plans, and we are ready to pursue an application. Unfortunately, the person in charge of reviewing that program has left her position with the state, and they're trying to fulfill that position. So we're hoping in the next month or so they refill that position. But we, I have been in talks with them, but unfortunately, something, it was an unfortunate situation, unforeseen situation. We were ready to submit an application for this, and they need to f uh, refill that position in order to take on, take on any new applications. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a kinder. Yeah, to follow up on uh, Mr. Crisotti's comments, uh, what we're voting on today is simply to grant an extension of two, um, for two more years. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, from your uh, contact with the state, do you see any potential problem with getting this extension? Uh, there's no, the state, this is a local uh, agreement, nothing to do with the state whatsoever. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the last question then is, uh, assuming that um, all the funds are used, do you have any, and you might have already answered it, and I, I just didn't hear it, um, do you have any estimate as to how much it's going to cost beyond the $300,000? I would probably uh, defer to the conservancy to answer that. I'm not, we're not sure the exact numbers of what the final phase is going to cost until they get the bids in. But um, they've, had, uh, they have an they've had an architect obviously prepare the plans and provide an estimate. And they can probably discuss that. Because what this council is voting on is, the 300, is, is using the $300,000 from bonding. We're not voting to uh, spend ed money beyond that 300000 And I'm just kind of curious as to how much it might cost beyond that 300000 if there's anyone from the uh, Conservancy that can respond to that, I'd appreciate that. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Rich Suzak, 35 South Road in Phil, Connecticut. <coughs> in, in terms of, we, we, I don't have, unfortunately, the performer with me or our estimate with me, but what we're anticipating is that we, we have a shortfall of Mike. about... Mike. 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 Oh. Uh, what, we're, what we anticipate is that we have a shortfall of around $100,000. So what we... $100,000. So we, we have talked to the state. And they had indicated that potentially we could get a matching grant for that $100,000 as long as we have the, the funds in our pocket to pay for the entire, I guess, renovation to, you know, for a, a $200,000 renovation or upgrade of the building. And once we finish that phase of the work, they would refund us $100,000, which would allow us to finish the, the, the last $100,000 that we need. So that, I, so I guess what that means is that. 
Yeah, sorry. So it's it's a yeah. reimbursable grant. So you can bar you can if you qualify, there's a hundred thousand dollars. So but we have to have the hundred thousand dollars in hand. Right. Well So we have a hundred and so we have hundred and forty two thousand dollars remaining from the original. That's what you're using the extension grant. for, correct? correct? But you need another hundred thousand. No. No. So no. we need we need another um, like sixty thousand dollars, which we have okay. right. which we have fundraised, so we have that in, in our in our accounts. So we would have to have if we if we qualified for the hundred thousand dollars, which is the maximum amount that they will grant, um, we would have to have everything, and then when the project is completed, then the state comes and reviews it and makes sure that we've done everything that we were supposed to do according to the plan and according to their their criteria, and, and then we would be reimbursed for the hundred thousand dollars. Correct. But we have to have it all in hand. So you need it. So, so we my need to have two hundred thousand dollars. You still need, aside from this extension, you still need almost a hundred thousand dollars. No, we need sixty thousand dollars. That would one hundred and forty-two so and asking, sixty. So you're asking for the state for forty thousand dollars more. No, we would be asking for one hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. Just That's that forty thousand more than you need. No, it's sixty thousand. No, 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 no. Basically, I guess you have a hundred thousand. You have a hundred thousand okay, dollars. We have that you're, you're asking for. You're, you're asking for an extension. I understand that. Correct. The state will give you another hundred thousand if you match another hundred thousand. Correct. But we have to pay for two hundred thousand dollars in total prior to the state giving us a hundred thousand dollars. Because right now we were anticipating it's going to take us. But you're short a hundred thousand. We're three hundred. Right? It's going to take us three hundred thousand dollars to finish. How much? Three three hundred thousand. So another three hundred thousand. No, no, for, for, another no. Another two hundred thousand. No, because we have one hundred and forty from the town. We have our coffers. We have about eighty thousand okay. dollars. So that's two hundred and twenty. Okay. So that. So with that two hundred and twenty thousand dollars, if the if we get a, a grant from the, the state for a hundred thousand dollars, basically we could we would allocate to a two hundred a, a phase that was would be worth two hundred thousand dollars to complete a certain portion of the work. That would leave another hundred thousand dollars to finish. And what we would need to do is we would need to accomplish in end that first phase for $200,000, at that point, the state would come in and look at what we've done, and as long as we have complied with all their criteria, they would reimburse us $100,000, which would give us the $300,000 that we need to finish. So basically, what we're doing is we're leverage, leveraging our 140 plus our coffers to, to engage, you know, for a final, a, a, a next to final phase of two hundred thousand dollars, and then once we finish that phase, we get a hundred thousand dollars from the state. Sounds like a tap dance to me, but I don't know. I, but but that, I, that's how the state works. So in terms let of me the ask grant. you this question: How much longer is this project going to go? We're anticipating that it, it should not go longer than because it's the been about forty years by now of a money pit that we've been throwing money into it. This wasn't a grant. I, I noticed that this was not a grant, $300,000 grant. This money came from the town council uh, when we saved money when we did away with the, the, uh, the guards in schools. And I was on a council when we did that $300,000. It was an amendment, amendment to the uh, budget. So it wasn't, it, it, what, what you say here is the town of Enfield grant for wasn't really a grant. We gave you, yeah, we gave you a grant of three hundred thousand dollars. Was money left over from the guards? This has been. Well, I've been on the council six years, and you still don't have a certificate of occupancy. What is this building going to be used for once we get it done? Just to look at it nice, and it's going to be a nice uh, Hazardville Institute and a nice building to drive by and say, "Geez, that place is wonderful." Colonel Hazard built it. And it's been in our history forever. Are we ever going to use it for anything? Yes, we are, and I'm I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, the building is intended to be used by the community. It is intended to be an active place. It is intended to highlight um, the history of 
of Hazardville, the gunpowder factory, and... So a museum? Partly a museum, did you ever, partly a meeting did you ever place. Think of, did you ever think of trying to merge yourself with the Enfield, uh, Enfield Historical Society? No, we're we're a separate we're a separate entity, and Tony Secunda. So you have nothing to do with the historical no, society at all. So at this point in time, no, we don't. Um, Tony Secunda, who who was. Yeah, I have in my mind that I have a building. If you let me answer the question, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So Tony Secundo, who was formerly our president, was also the president of the Historical Society. We do work um, with members of the Historical Society, and but we have separate missions at this point in time. So our mission really has been to restore the building. So there was probably 20 years where nothing happened. And the organization reconstituted itself in 2000. And since then, we've been very active. And I think we've accomplished a lot. Well, we have and a, we're we very have a, grateful for the $300,000 grant. We have, a building here, we have a building here in Thompsonville that we tried to re, re, revitalize. And we're going to be hitting it with a wrecking ball in a short period of time, well, uh, we're, the we're, Strand Theater. And, and it's unfortunate, when we got reorganized, we actually did get some assistance from the Save Our Stand group to um, get our 501c3 designation. And I, so you I, don't have, really, I have no so control you don't really over need, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not against this whole project. I am, what I'm against is that it's been go going on forever and ever. And I, what I'm afraid of, of is that at some point in time, someone from this organization is going to come here and ask me, as I probably won't be here as a councilman, but ask this council again for another grant for some money, again for to, to revitalize this building. And so again, you know, all these years, I don't know how much money you've raised over the course of time, but. It just seems to me like it's a money pit. There's never been a, a certificate of occupancy. I was in it just recently, not too long ago. We had a tour of the building. There's no, you have bricks inside. There's no walls. You can see through the, the, the top floor to the bottom. I played basketball there years ago. So, I mean, this is going to pass. There's not a problem, but I don't think I'm going to vote for so it. Thank you. So we have essentially done all the structural work um, to, to stabilize the building and to get it to the point where we can, where we can do the finished work. Um, and, and unfortunately, it takes time. But, you know, it's, we've had a lot of people, um, businesses who, who have assisted us, who have donated services. Um, it's, not, it's not just been about getting money. Um, there, there have been many, many local businesses that have, have assisted us. Um, and through the course of this last restoration, um, we have worked with local businesses. We've worked with Kelly Fordette. Um, we got windows not directly through A.W. Hastings, but we, we did get Marvin windows um, from one of their suppliers, because A.W. Hastings is, um, is a distributor and could not sell them to us. We used a local contractor to um, put the addition on. So um, not, not only have we uh, restored a building, but there, there's an economic um, factor here where we've been able to work with our local businesses. So um, I, I don't think it's just a money pit. In Enfield Concrete Transit also donated some, some of their materials for us. And in terms of everything takes time, you have to realize that, you know, and, and everything takes money. We've been working very hard to try to get grants. We've been working very hard to accomplish anything. In terms of, you know, you can't compare us to the Strand because we have upgraded our facade. In terms of if you actually look back to 15 years ago, the whole place was falling apart. All the bricks were, were falling off the building. There was, you know, a fire escape that was not functional, and we, we stabilized the entire exterior of the building. We stabilized the roof system. We stabilized all the framing system. It's a viable, structurally sound building. So it, it, when you're comparing us with the Strand, you're comparing apples and oranges. It's not even close to being, you know, the same in terms of. And, and we keep 
going forward in terms of we're not taking steps back, we're taking steps forward, but taking those steps forward always takes time, especially if you have li limited finances. So that, that's our constraint, is that we have limited finances and we have a, a building that was built for the 1860s and this is 2019. So what we need to do is we need to recognize the fact that, you know, times have changed and, and, and conditions have to change for you know us to go forward so that at that point we you know we will move forward and we are moving forward we're not moving backward and and virtually every cent that we have spent on this building has been for bricks and mortar the as far as the overseeing and management of the project that has essentially and been done by by rich suzak and, and myself so we haven't been paying anybody to 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 manage the project that's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. I still have the floor. Still Thank you, Mr. Fine. Mayor. Yeah, um, I, I would agree with, with Mr. Denny, and I, I really hope that um, uh, you get the two-year ex two extension goes through, and you'll come back in two years and tell us the building's operational, it's no longer a facade, and, and we'll all be happy about that. But I, let me just say one more thing. I, I'm, I'm afraid math was never my strong suit, either in high school or in college. So can you really simplify this for me? After the three hundred thousand dollars is used, how much money will you be asking for, approximately, from either this town council or the next town council? Is there any figure on that? I have just, no idea. All I need is a dollar figure, just approximately. We, we and have, I'll be happy. We have never asked for any money from the town council. In terms of that, was given to us for, via the grant from a, a previous councilor thought that it would be beneficial for the entire town to benefit from us being able to move forward in terms of we did not actively come in and say you know please give us money if we did not bang on anybody's door we did not beg for money it was given to us as a grant as as most towns should should recognize the fact that when people are moving forward and when people need a little hand you have to let, lend a helping hand and and we're very grateful that the town had enough foresight to see the fact that we were moving forward and and that you know they were be beneficial to give us a hand if, if you turn your back on everybody that was trying to do some good in this town, you would have nothing to, that would be going forward in this town. So in that vein, I think that the town did a, a very beneficial thing to go forward and to recognize the fact that we are progressing forward. I commend you. I commend you for your hard work. And I don't know if you heard my original comment. I am supporting this resolution. And I, search, I support what you're doing. It's a great activity. And I, within a two-year period or whatever, I want to see that building used. So I thank you for your work. All I'm asking for, it's a simple question, and I'm not sure I got the answer. We are not going to ask for I, any more money. Wait, wait, a, wait a minute. I, I, I think until you, we go out to the, bid, the, we won't the, know the The answer. resolution states that the $300,000 is not going to be enough. That's a no-brainer. It says it right there in the resolution. So you'll be coming to somebody for more money. That's another no-brainer. How much are you coming, how much do you plan on coming to for the town? Not the state. I know the state, you're looking for another grant. Let's assume you get the grant and that's fine. Are you asking or will you be asking for any money from this town council or the next town council? That's all I'm asking. I, I don't think we really know. I okay. think that I think that the answer is is that the closer we get to completion of our building, um, the easier I think our fundraising will be from from the community. That people want to support something where they see an end game, and so at, at this point in time, fundraising. Well, for, for any nonprofit, for any organization, fundraising is not easy. There, there's just not a lot of money out there. Sure. Um, but I think that the closer we get, that there are people that are very supportive of what we've done, and we're hoping that when, when they see that we're really close, um, that that they'll be able to open up their pocketbooks. Well, just you know, count me as one of the supporters. I mean, years ago, people would ask me, what's happening with that building? And I would say, give it time. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And eventually it will. Well, so it, it I don't want happening. you thinking that anyone of us on the council are opposed to what you're doing. We're not. At least 
talking for myself, I, I approve of what you're doing. I think it's a wonderful activity, and I'd love to see this building put to use. All I'm asking for is just dollars and cents. And Gretchen, you answered the, the, when you said you didn't know, and that's that's fine. You don't know how much you know is going to be uh, well, asked, we'll, and I can understand that. I think once once we put this next phase out to bid, we're we're going to know what it's what it's going to cost. At this point, we. We just don't know. Okay. In the last phase that we did, we were very fortunate that we, we debated whether or not to to start it before the winter, and we talked with our contractor and we decided to do it, and it turned out to be a, a good decision because the cost of materials went up um, considerably. So we, we save money by by moving forward. So we just never know. Thank we, you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Because we, we no. do. Okay. Councilor Bosco, we need, we need to move on. Okay, so let me get this right. You can't, you're sort of stuck because you can't spend 145000 because you need that money in the bank so you can have a matching grant. Correct. So that's the reason why you can't spend the money or you would be further down the road with the construction. Correct. So, so what, I, what I, I don't know if there, anyone's understanding is that's why you can't. And then the next problem is, um, you know, like the Strand, I wish we had a committee that would have worked for 40 years trying to save that building because I would love to go watch Lassie come home again there. Well, uh, you know, too. but if no one tried it, it never is going to get anywhere. I mean, you got to give the uh, will of the the commission or committee a lot of credit for for pursuing over this for for many years um and to price to get a, get a price i mean how are you gonna know they there could be a tariff on the one piece you need that's right and uh you know the the, the, the price project's going to go up i mean i remember when we were doing roads when the recession was here we were getting a heck of a deal on the roads you know a million dollars went Two million dollars now. A million dollars only gets you five hundred thousand. So you know the time is going to make the difference, and the longer that time goes by, the worse it may be. Um, so I, I mean, I'm going to support this. Uh, I think it's a good cause, and uh, you know, to the point about coming for extra money, you'll never know till you put the last nail in what the the project's going to be, and. Realistically, it's up to the 11 council people either tell you they're going to give you money or pound sand. And, and, but you can't be held to a guarantee right now when you don't know. What if you're $5,000 away and you can't raise it to open the door? You know, th th things come up. So uh, I'm going to support this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you can get this thing done sooner than later. And um, I want to thank you for the advice because that would have been good advice because I would have spent the money and then not had any money for a matching uh, grant. So, uh, you know, that was th for thinking. You know, just like people say, we, we don't think ahead, but that's thinking ahead. Don't spend the money yet, you know. But on the other hand, you're jeopardizing losing the time of the two years, the money run out. So, you know, we have to give it to you because if not, uh, all you're waiting for and trying to get the other grant would would be in vain. So, thank you. Councilor Sparaza. I actually was debating whether or not I should ask this question because I didn't want to muddy the waters, but at this point, I don't think I could. <laughs> so it's very simple to me. This resolution this evening is not asking for any money. All the resolution is doing is saying you need a two-year extension. Correct. That's the issue before us tonight. That's exactly correct. Okay. So hopefully you get that hundred thousand. Hopefully you don't need any more money. But if you do, and you come back, that's the time we'll do this debate. I'm not sure why we're having it tonight. Tonight is simple. You need a two-year extension and no money. Correct. Great. I'm Thank good. you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I, I guess there's been a lot of chatter here. Um, for me, I like. I want to clarify for everybody who doesn't understand all the nuances of historic buildings and historic preservation and all these, you know, 503 C's or whatever they are. The Hazardville Institute is owned by the town of Enfield. It is a town building. These are citizens. 
that are dedicated to a town building. Now let's take the other building, our other pet building, the Strand. The Strand was not owned by the town until they took it for tax liability. The 503C that was in charge of that did not maintain their status as a nonprofit. They went into tax default. And the minute that we have it, and we have it now, we don't know what to do with it. And you know, all of us, Bob, Bill, me, Joe, we sit on facilities and we're scared to death of what the next thing is going to come before us is. That's a town building. And for one, thank you for taking care of a town building that I don't care about the roof leaking there. And I'll tell you, when the roof leaked there, this, this committee went up and, and fixed the roof. And when they needed money, because they did get money once from the town, they got a loan, they paid it back. So, you know, there's been a lot of things that have happened. And the initiative for this building was started by the state. That's why it will be have community use. But we all have to sit back and say, how do all the puzzle pieces fit together? And how does it work? And I'll support this. And they make me clean all the time, too. Also, Denny. I'm glad you brought that up, Donna, because if I had $300,000 that we sunk into this building, I could have fixed Hazard Room Memorial and Barnard and every roof school that still leaks with that money. Ed, the roofs are 1.2 million. I'm supporting this because it's an extension and it costs the town any money, but I just want to bring up that point. If I had the 300,000, I could have fixed every roof in Enfield. Or almost. Well. Two schools anyway. Well, again, we're not here to debate what prior councils have my done. Head. I mean, so my only, th my only point to you folks, ag you. agree that there was a committee for the Strand. And actually, if you recall, Governor Rowland at the time came to Enfield, and I think he donated, four, I think it was $400,000 of state money or three fifty, dollars whatever it was, at that point back in the 90s to move the Strand forward. And again, for whatever reason, it just didn't, didn't work, and it didn't happen. I, I don't want to comment other than that. It's just a fact of the matter. And your fo yo, you're right. You didn't ask for the 300 grand. It was given to you from the town. You're managing it very tightly. And I know, I think Councilman Bosco said it best. You'd love to move forward, but actually you got a chance to, if you halt for a little bit, to actually get some state matching grants from the historical uh, grants that maybe in past we didn't know were out there. And again, good news, we hired someone from the state who understands those grants are out there and are helping you folks. So. Again, I think to what Council Bosco said, we're actually trying to be proactive, even if we have to take a step back a little bit, to, to the point of getting that matching grant is to finish the project, not to ask for more money from the town. That's the point, right? Yes. So I support this as well. Thank you. Thank you. And we are very grateful for, for your support and for the original $300,000. And we have worked very hard to um, make it go as far as possible. Oh. Mr. Mayor, if I'd known there was so much interest in this, I would have put it down for a special 6 to 7 o'clock meeting so we could have had a presentation. I think it would have been interesting. Maybe we'll do it in the future when they get this grant. And in the famous words of Red Edgar, I think he would say, it's now time to move the question. Thank you. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisotti? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ledwick? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sprazza? Four. Councilor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungar? Four. Nine in favor, none against. Moving on to item N, resolution setting a public hearing for the 2019 Neighborhood Assistant Grant Act. Resolve the Enfield Town Council hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, June 17th at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the 2019 Neighborhood Assistant Act proposals submitted on May 28, 2019 by the Town Manager's Office. So by Councilor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councilor Denny. It says 18. You just have to amend to make it say 19 on the... It says 18. Is that that? Again, just a, that's what it says, Lisa, on this, my packet. Prepared. prepared. I said prepared by a May, yeah. Any discussion on the resolution? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Crisotti? Four. Councillor Denny? 
Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Spraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Eight in favor, none against? Moving on to item O. A resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into a lease agreement with Ed Educational Resources for Children, Inc. Whereas the current lease for the Educational Resource for Children, Inc., ERFC, began September 1, 2012, expires on June 30, 2019. And whereas ERFC, Inc., has requested a new lease for a term of five years for the purpose of operating a before and after school child care program in various rooms in the following town owned school facilities one, Henry Barnard Elementary School, two, Prudence Scrandall, three, Enfield Street, Street School. Four, Hasbro Memorial. Five, Edward, Edgar H. Parkman. Six, Eli Whitney. Whereas the Town Hall, Town, Enfield Town Council supports the lease of specific rooms within these town owned school facilities for the aforementioned purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Manager, Christopher Dover Bromson, is empowered to execute the lease between the Town of Enfield and the Educational Resource for Children, Inc., subject to review and approval of the Town Attorney by. by uh, Approved by Kasha Purcell, Assistant Town Manager, on May 23rd, 2019. So moved. By second. Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Crisati. I don't think there's just, any question. I think I, you've. I, so just I, go, have, I just have one because I'm not sure. I just asked Councilor Crisati. He said yes, but we have increased uh, the fees that we're charging them for, for the facilities. Yes, we reviewed this. Um, okay. We had estimate, estimates from. Uh, finance to see what the incremental increase should be from the last time the lease was signed in 2012. We also have included in this lease a 3% increase going forward each year to address that. I would like to say that uh, ERFC has been a wonderful partner. They've worked very hard with uh, Kasha on this. Uh, they offer a wonderful service to the children of our town. We're glad to have them. We're glad to continue this collaborative effort with them going into the future. And we thank them for their cooperation during the negotiation of this uh, renewal of the lease. As you know, we've been very uh, diligent in looking at all leases and looking at uh, funding and, and use of our fields and facilities and looking at leases to make sure it's fair to both us and the residents of the town. And I commend ERFC for stepping up to the plate and agreeing to the terms of this lease. I think it's fair for them and for us. And again, they do a wonderful job for the children of Enfield. We thank them. All set it. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Fraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Nine in favor, none against? Now the most exciting resolution of the night, saved it for last. Resolve resolution, <laughs> item P in miscellaneous. Resolution canceling special, re excuse me, selected regular meetings in July and August. Resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby cancel the regular meetings of the council scheduled for July 15, 2019. In August 18, 2019. Don't Prepared move. by the town manager's office, moved by Deputy, Su Deputy Mayor Suzak, yeah. seconded by Councillor Angar. I'm not sure if there's any discussion, but if anyone would like to discuss. Well, if you don't pass it, you'll be, <laughs> I'll just tell you, if you don't pass, you'll be here alone on those exactly. dates. <laughs> All right, so July 15, August 18th. Set the, yeah. the second meetings in each month. So right. the first meetings we'll have, that's the second meetings that are No canceled. meetings in July, the second. The okay. second meeting. Roll call, August, please. Or August. <laughs> Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Chairman Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Spraza? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. And Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Nine in favor, none against. Moving on to item 16, public communications. Would anyone like to speak for the council at this time? Rich. Retrenier, 206 Abbey Road. Um, I watched a little bit this evening in regards to the presentation uh, for the Stowe Building. Uh, that's kind of my premise of being here this evening. Uh, a couple of misconceptions and thoughts. Number one, uh, not everyone from the Board of Ed and <clears throat> Town Council was on favor of this change. Uh, I myself voted very adamantly in the beginning of it when we were having closed door discussions that I did not approve of the program going to the Stowe Building because of the size of Stowe Building. So just to clear up um, any misconceptions on that, not everyone from the Board of Ed was, was an approval. Although the, the program itself, the Eagle Academy, is a great program and I think there's another place in town that could happen. But my concern was and will always be that the placement of that program was not appropriate for that <clears throat> location. Number two, uh, there was a comment made in regards to $750,000 being uh, out, of, out of touch in regards to the reality of what an air conditioner would cost. 
2017, Newington um, had proposed to their Board of Education a $1.5 million um, fee to, to air condition four classrooms, uh, and those are ductless air conditioners. Um, and that is $1.5 million for four classrooms. So looking at $750,000 for air conditioner of a gym, I don't think is, is that out of touch, uh, considering our neighbors to the south uh, already put a bid in for something that was around the same thing. Uh, thirdly, um, in regards to the parking, I did see the new layout in regards to the parking. Um, concerns that come up with the parking is you have an active crossway between four playgrounds on each side that you're going to be moving cars in and out of. You have an active basketball hoop in the back left corner that cars will be going in and out of. I don't see any change in regards to the direction of how cars flow in and flow out. So that is going to be a concern from people that I, from people that I've talked to, and people that don't want to come before the board for for concerns of just not wanting to come out and public speak. Um, but the placement of those cars, the front is great, but the back it's abutting the the four playgrounds to the left, and the six playgrounds to the right, and the open basketball court that's back there as well. So there is concern about people walking their kids, and the concern about cars coming in and out with the flow of traffic. Um, <clears throat> bathrooms, um, I know this was kind of taken late, um, but listen, that building was made for kindergarten to sixth grade. And when the town turned that building over and it became the, the Criminal Justice Academy from crack and whatever it may be, you, you're looking to move a lot of kids in there who are just beginning to potty train, okay? This isn't a, this isn't a in incidental thing. Bathrooms are necessary. You're taking kids out of Head Start building. Six classrooms that all have a bathroom inside that classroom because of concerns of potty training. That's part of the development of that child progressing, not just educational, but potty training as well. Now you're going to be putting them into a building that's already congested in regards to the bathrooms that are in that building with the kids that are there. So the concern is going to continue to be, is there enough bathrooms in there or are all these kids going to have issues with potty training because of this? It, it's, a, it's a legitimate concern. It's nothing to balk at. I know bathrooms are, adults can hold it, kids can't. I've seen this firsthand. Um, as a parent of, of two students that go to the Stowe building, obviously I have concerns in regards to what's going to happen there, where the layout of the classrooms are going to be. I know earlier it was mentioned that the Board of Education members have all the answers in regards to where the kids are going to be placed. I don't know when I'm on the Board of Ed. Okay, I've been asking these questions since day one. I don't know where these kids are going to be placed. I've been told in the gym. I've been told in the, in the play lab. I've been told in conference rooms. And these are things that are coming out on Fridays that are updating me. It doesn't give me any more answers. It just gives me more concerns. Okay, you can't place 20 kids, 40 kids, 60 kids in the small area that we have. So that's the information I just wanted to bring out to you. Thank you, Mr. Ludwig, uh, for bringing that to attention this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bromson, for the presentation this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? George, come on. Oh, God. Okay, All right. As far as the uh, Hazard Bill Institute, Conservatory Society, that 501c organization. The mic. The mic, George. Sorry. Let's start again. Oh, let's be quick. I, I, I can hear myself. I gave you full three now. minutes. Don't worry. Um, as far as the Hazardville Institute Conservatory Society, the 501, 503C organization, I got one word for them, and it's perseverance. I can't imagine going through what they're going through and having done what they've done over these past few years and still come here. The second thing I want to talk about is, Mr. Corsati, you mentioned the Blue Book, which the group is going to hopefully publish pretty soon, and putting in their information about um, getting the fuel assistance. The problem is it's only going to go to the seniors, and that's the only place those books are going. It won't be going to other people who may become income eligible to get this fuel assistance. The seniors would get this automatically if they go and fill out the forms at the Social Services Department. They see their income. They know automatically, or they should know automatically, to mention to them, you're eligible for fuel assistance. Can we do something? And that's where it should be taken care of. Okay? So that's basically all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Walter.
Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road, $300,000. It wouldn't even fix this roof above our head. $30 million that Washington spent could fix a lot of roofs. That's half my budget. So maybe you should ask your friends down in Washington why they spent $30 million on useless studies and useless this. $30 million, I should say. Is that what I said? So, but they've been doing a, a terrific job with that building in Hazardville, and they're close. They're really close, and it takes time, just like it takes time for us to get roofs done in this town. It's just bureaucracy. It's total binders of papers and, and everything just to put a roof on a building. It's ridiculous, but it's what it is. And Mr. Bromson, thank you for the presentation on the Stowe building. Thank you for all your support. This project, this we're getting close on this too, and I think this is going to work. Head Start, Head Start moving into Stowe. We're going to be a model for this state that we've put the whole program together. And like the mayor said, adding steam to every child in this town. This will this will do now. So. And the state's already looking at us to they're gonna we're gonna present this to other districts, this this uh, this building in Stowe and how this pro pro program works. So we're gonna make it work, and that's what we do. We have to have faith in our staff. I listened to all the things that we, you you went up through. Staff in this town works tremendous. We gotta have faith in them and and let them do their work, and and I know it will work. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Hearing none, I declare public communications closed. Any council communications this time? Councilor Speraza? I apologize for not saying this at the beginning of the meeting, but um, last Sunday I was honored to be asked to participate in our, our Memorial Day parade. And I want to thank the veterans in town that put that parade together. Um, I miss that uh, Mr. Plamanda wasn't there, but I, I think it was an extraordinary day. And I just want to say that what Mr. Denny said at the beginning of the meeting, uh, D-Day on Thursday is the seven, 75th anniversary. Our veterans won't be around for the 100th. And I, for one, appreciate and understand that the freedoms and liberties to have these types of meetings isn't because we were lucky. It was paid for with the blood of the people on D-Day and all the wars. So maybe on Thursday, I'm not saying it's a national day of prayer, but I'll certainly be thinking about what happened on the beaches of Normandy and grateful that God gave me the chance to live in this country. Thank you. Just closing, I, I agree. So the, the Parkman school kids, the saying at, at the ceremony, if folks didn't see it, Again, tying in the Reese Across America ceremony, which I recommend everyone getting an opportunity to go see at Parkman School. So they actually marched in the parade, those kids, and sang God Bless America and America the Beautiful, which are two great songs, no matter who sings it, but they did a great job honoring our veterans, hung in air when it was hot. Again, so I think it just, again, another testament, if you were here at the, the, the ceremony, Enfield Public Schools was on full display, JFK band, Enfield High band, Parkman School kids, and then those kids who I hope that we can bring next meeting from JFK, who will do a fantastic presentation and honor to our Civil War veterans, which, I mean, it's very interesting. I don't want to kind of throw it away, but 39 individuals who gave their life in the Civil War fighting for the North Union, they are honoring. They did the research. I'm really excited for people in town to see what our kids are doing. And last thing, if you're in, it's in a par, I apologize. Maybe next meeting we have an update on the RFQ for the uh, real estate option of, you know, I know we're looking forward to putting together, starting to market our buildings that we have that we're trying to sell. You know, I know, I don't know where we're on that process, but to let people know that we actually, I know there's some vacant buildings in town. Yeah, we've, we've even, chosen, yeah. we've chosen the realtor and Nelson's working now. The next phase is to identify the different properties uh, that we'll have them be marketing for us. Right. We'll update that. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Council Uh Lastly, uh, on Monday, June 17th, is the Community Day of Prayer, and that will be held at the gazebo from 7 to 8, so everyone's welcome. You know, Mr. Mayor, I'll just add in, in the spirit of um, 
the 75th anniversary, the celebration, and, and what you mentioned as well uh, about the parade. At the parade, the Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz was here, and she reached out to us, and we're working with her. They identified around the state. They did uh, World War II veterans, and they've done uh, Korean veterans, and now we're trying to look through between our assessor's list and the clerk's office identifying Vietnam veterans. Some towns have actually put ads out and solicited the public, but I'll take this opportunity um, for any of those they want to come. They're going to be going to all the towns, the governor and the lieutenant governor, to recognize Vietnam War veterans. Um, we had quite a few from this town, so I... I ask the reporter, Jessica, and people at home, if you know a veteran who would like to be recognized, we're trying to cross-reference the lists um, because they're not complete. So if anybody out there is interested, please contact the manager's office, give us your information, spread the word to neighbors and friends, because I think that's a wonderful thing that they're going to be doing in the fall, and they would come to Enfield anytime from August, September, October, and we'll have a uh, award ceremony with everybody invited to recognize the uh, Vietnam veterans of the town of Enfield. So please reach out to friends, family, anybody you might know. We will do something more on our website and a press release to do it formally, but we encourage everybody to come forward that served in that war and would like to come and be recognized uh, by our state officials. Anything else? A motion to adjourn? Motion. By yes. Councilor Danny, seconded by Councilor Sadi. All those in favor, by show of hands. Nine in favor, zero against. Good night, everyone. Thank you.